we go. I think we're live. Oh, I know I haven't done. I have not put on my laptop. As per usual, you lot carry on amongst yourselves a minute. I'm just going to sort my life out and hopefully not turn off the computer. Nokia's 3-in-1 desk charger. Nokia's.com. Oh, now where is my laptop? So, evening everybody. It's uh, Saturday, November the 2nd. Hope you're all having a good evening. Sorry for my uh, lack of professionalism once again. Hopefully you can all hear me, see me and all that kind of good stuff. Let's try and get my laptop on. Ah, dear. Now, I was semi-organised. Then I realised the one important thing. I can't see what the heck is going on. So for those of you that are nursing uh, hangovers or whatever it is from the England match earlier today, the rugby, uh, runners up, not too bad. Could have been worse. Not a lot, but could have been a lot worse. No, it could have been worse. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> ah, dearie me. Been on a bit of a spending spree today, so I'm a little bit be, uh, behind getting things done, been a really busy day today. Finally did the uh, the build in the XPG case, the XPG Invader. That's what it's called, right? XPG Invader, yeah. Just checking my calf there. Right, YouTube, where are we? Come on, how are we doing? We looking okay? Yeah, we've got, got a few people in already, and for some reason got seven likes already. How is that even possible? Now, today's video, oh, actually, where did I put that? <laughs> there was something else I was going to unbox, which was going to make my life easier. But I don't know where I put it now. <sighs> Dear me. Right. Where is my page? So, Mike's unboxing. Not Mike Tyson boxing. That's a completely different thing. Oh, it says I'm live now. Happy days. No, I don't want to restore some pages. But I better. Have... Oh, there's an ad. Right, click on that. Okay. Right, skip ad. Sorry about this. This is terrible. Right, so if I click on live, that should take me to where I am at the moment, in theory. Oh, come on, what's going on now? Oh, ad block. Don't use ad block, kids. <laughs> right then, so let's say quick hellos to those that are in the chat. So, evening to Glenn, Aletta, um, Meg's Visuals, and I think that's it at the moment. Probably going to be a quiet night tonight because there's a lot of things going on over in the UK, and I'm not sure what time it is in the United States of America. Uh, tonight we've got our fireworks display, Guy Fawkes, uh, the old tradition of when Guy Fawkes years ago tried to uh, blow up Parliament, which actually, all these years later, is probably still not that bad an idea. Although, I shouldn't say that, that's demonetised the whole thing. <laughs> right, let's get the pop-out chat working. Right, that is working, I think. This computer is so slow at the moment, it is horrendous. I certainly need to get a new laptop, I think. <coughs> so, how are we looking? Right, so, it's a nice stream. Um, I've got my old PC toolkit. Now, this toolkit basically went with me pretty much everywhere I went from around about 2001 through to probably about 2011, I want to say. Maybe even a bit later than that, actually. Did I still take it over in Cardiff? Not very often. No, not very often. I think I did to start with. So probably maybe about 2014. So this thing about about 13 or so years of regular daily abuse. And since then, it's actually been at home most of the time. But this thing is full of stuff that I've used over the years to mend PCs, repair PCs, bodges, fixes, all sorts of things. So 
in the video, we're going to go along through it and we're going to open up the box as we do because this is an unboxing channel. And we're going to look through some of my uh, my favourites in the toolkit and actually look and see if there's anything in there which is potentially embarrassing or uh, just plain stupid. It is quite possible. Now this case actually has got an interesting story behind it. Uh, Kath and I went to one of these uh, auctions. So you know every now and then you get a load of flyers up around the kind of dual carriageways and freeways and highways and stuff saying uh, auction on such and such date, go there, blah, 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 get some bargains. So uh, yeah, there are some pretty good offers listed, sort of like uh, vacuum cleaners for five pounds, full sets of cutlery, knife sets, sky boxes, sky dishes. Now this is when sky dishes were kind of not really a thing in uh, this is probably, I'll probably pick this case up actually. We're like 96, 97? No, bef no, early 90s. Yeah, early 90s I, I got this case. Actually, this was part of the auction and the guy come in at the end and we hadn't bought anything. So he did this bundle. And in this was a camera. Cause this is pretty much like a camera flight case. And it was like a, a bit of a surprise bundle. So they were going around off the audience, taking off, uh, it started off at about £250 for this bundle of stuff. And they said, look, we're not going to tell you what's in it. Just trust us. You've seen all these great things that have gone out beforehand. And there was like VHS, VHS? VHS videos and all these kinds of things. And actually pretty good bargains. So we thought, yeah, we'll, we'll go in for that. And uh, long story short, we ended up paying about 40 to £60, I sort of seem to remember. Now, in the early 90s, actually, that was quite a lot of money. Probably the equivalent of about £100, £150 now. And we came away with this, a, a telephone with an answer machine and hands-free and all that kind of stuff, again, which in the time was uh, quite a rarity. The handset, didn't work. Uh, the, the handset didn't work. The base station was fine, the handset didn't work. And this was a camera, and the camera that was in it was an old stills camera, like old-fashioned film. It had, uh, I think it had a detachable lens. It didn't have any sort of brand into it. It, it, it might have been a Pentax, I'm not entirely sure but it had a flash and all that kind of stuff. And we took the, the bits and pieces apart and the camera actually had a massive lead weight in it to give it some feeling of uh, weight. So essentially it's like a 110 camera in a massive body. It was rubbish. But the case itself, I kept, I threw away the camera and pretty much everything else and kept this. So that was, uh, that was uh, part of the story. So this case has been with uh, Mike's Unboxing for a long time. Yeah, early 90s, so, it's that 90, 2000? It's like 30 years I've had this case nearly. It's pretty terrifying, really, isn't it? And it's actually stood up to the test of time, so as far as it goes for a flight case, it actually does work. I haven't got the keys for the locks anymore. No. Uh, a couple more have joined in the live chat. So we've got Katie and Sam, evening to you. Oh, no. Anyway, right, it's a bit warm in here tonight. We've got the wood burner going, and we've got the studio lights on, and it's really hot in here. If you can hear clicking, that's the fire kicking in. So anyway, let's get on with this. So um, yeah, so we're going to have a look inside the box if you are interested in seeing what is in there. There's some classic stuff in there actually from the early 90s of PC repair. So some things you'll find in there are quite amusing. Some of it is just completely generic and probably no interest. But nonetheless, this kit has served me really, really well over the years. Uh, also coming up, going to have a bit of discussion and some unboxings as well. So, like I said, I've been on a bit of a shopping spree. So, got a Ryzen 5 3600 that arrived today. Uh, that was a bargain actually on Amazon. Uh, that was about 170 pounds, I think it was, which actually is a pretty good price for the uh, for the Ryzen 5 3600. And it's equivalent speed, roughly, of the Ryzen 7 2700X in most games. A little bit faster in games, a little bit slower in productivity, but essentially. It's a really good replacement for the Ryzen 7 2700X, um, of which I don't have. George has got one upstairs, but I haven't. I've got the old 1700X, and uh, there's a, Calf's got a 1700, and there's a 1400 in the streaming PC now, which that's going to be going around and moving around anyway. So, uh, Ross is in, 80s horror fan, evening to you. So anyway, we'll have a little bit of a discussion in the, probably, possibly an unboxing in that one. Uh, this is another little interesting one. This is from um, Aluxum, or Luxum. I'm not sure how you pronounce that really. Aluminum, Aluxum. It's another one of those uh, dual bay drive copying caddies, the standalone drive copy, 
Also, you can use it as a hard drive dock, so you can plug it into your laptop, PC or whatever, and hot swap drives to copy data and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this actually has uh, been sent to me, actually, by Luxon. They reached out to me and said, oh, do you want to test any of our products? And I said, well, actually, I've just bought one of your USB to Ethernet adapters, which is what I was actually looking for because I wanted to use it for my laptop because this thing's only got Wi-Fi. It hasn't got an Ethernet port. So to increase what was in my kit, I did actually buy a USB to Ethernet adapter, which is really super useful if you're going out to someone's workplace and they're, oh, I can't connect to the internet. So if you're not sure if it's their uh, Ethernet card or the cable, you can you plug in a USB. Drivers are installed automatically by Windows. You can plug a network cable in and you should get an IP address and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not entirely sure where that has gone. It is in here somewhere, which is a shame because I wanted to use that tonight. But again, last minute as usual. So anyway, we'll take a look at that, do a quick unboxing, see what the deal is with that. Uh, also, we've got a PC build which is underway for our good friend uh, Glenn Halfway or Glenn Finnick, whichever way. One of them is a stage name, one of them is a real name. Anyway, I digress. So we're building a PC. Now, he's decided to go with the uh, Sahara P10 Sync case, which we reviewed on the channel, which you can check out up here in the links if you're watching this in the, uh, the repeat. But because it's a Game Max case and it's got Game Max fans and all that stuff, I thought, well, it needs a power supply, it needs a new power supply, so we'll go with. Something a little bit off the beaten track. Some people might immediately stick their tongues out and noses up and puke into a dustbin. But I actually thought I'd give this a go. This is the Game Max Power ATX Plus, the GP Series 500. So this is a 500 watt, 80 plus bronze. So it's not cheap trash. It's obviously not EVGA and all those kinds of things, but it's got 80 plus bronze rating. And actually looking at some of the reviews of this and the components inside, it isn't actually that bad a made power supply. So yeah, we're gonna be using that in the build. The cables are a little bit ketchup and mustardy. They are braided, so it's not all bad, but for 500 watts, this actually costs about 30 pounds in the UK at the moment, which for a power supply which is 80 plus bronze, it's actually pretty good. So we'll be taking a little look at that and you can uh, feel free to uh, diss it or give it a thumbs up or whatever you like to do. And this is the last, well, one of the last things. So this is, again, for the build that we're gonna be doing for our friend. Uh, this is the ASRock B450M-HDV revision 4.0. And this one actually is quite surprising, around about 50 pounds in the UK at the moment on Amazon. Again, we'll put some links in at a later date. But this actually, for a relatively cheap board, about 50 pounds, like I said, this is uh, AMD Ryzen 3000 desktop ready. And also, it supports the Athlon uh, 200 series straight out of the box. So this has got like the latest firmwares on it. So you can throw a 3000 series chip on there, a 2000 series chip, 1000 series chip, if you're doing a budget build or whatever. Uh, we're gonna be pairing this up with a Ryzen 5 1400. So again, with that power supply, this board, at least there's a little bit of future proofing. So should they wanna upgrade a little bit later on down the line when processors drop down even lower, if they possibly can. Um, quite easily put another chip on here. Now, I'm not sure what the highest rating chip is on this. From what I've read, I believe it supports up to 105 watt CPUs. So pretty much all the Ryzen 7s, a couple of the Ryzen 9s. So not a bad little board. And for a micro ECX board, which actually looks nice, it's got the, um, what is it they call it? Can't think what it's called now. The ELNA audio caps. So these are the uh, Nichicon uh, capacitors on the board for audio. Now, if you've not seen ASRock boards before or you're not sure about them, they seem to have really good audio. Now, you can spend loads of money on your ASUS and your MSIs, gigabytes, etc., etc. But ASRock boards, even the budget ones, seem to have brilliant uh, USB 3 controllers and really good audio. So, for a bargain basement motherboard, you get a lot of stuff for not a lot of money. So, really happy with that one. So, we'll have a little unboxing and go around some of the connectors. All the items you're going to see in tonight's uh, stream, there will be full unboxings and reviews and all that kind of stuff, all the usual stuff. So um, if there's anything I miss out on tonight's stream, then you can check out these videos later on in the week and you can see the full reviews and uh, see how it goes. Also, again, there will be the build, so we'll be doing the full build. I may well be doing that in next Saturday's stream. I might do a live build, uh, see how things go time-wise. We'll see. So, yeah, possibly a live build in that. 
Also, probably on the following Monday, or maybe this Monday, we'll do, I'm gonna do a live Windows installation. So this is from a, a base PC. So if someone's looking to install Windows on their PC and get a, a computer set up, we're gonna be going through everything from configuring the BIOS to start with, installing Windows, installing updates, drivers, security patches, uh, recommendations for antivirus, protection, VPNs, all those kinds of stuff. So essentially how to get a PC ready from scratch to ship out to a customer. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. <sighs> right, I think that is pretty much everything for the introduction. Um, yeah, we've had a spending spree today. So also I went to pick up George because today it's been raining absolutely crazy over here in the UK. Um, I don't know. It has been, yeah, it's been, normally we'd say it's been raining cats and dogs, but today it's been kind of like raining hippos and elephants. It's been an absolute downpour. So yeah, I went to pick up George from work and whilst, we, whilst I was messing around today and taking apart Cap's PC for the XPG Invader build, um, obviously first thing you do when you're taking apart a PC is to go through cleaning it all up and all that kind of stuff. So I got the vacuum out, done a bit out the corridor, and then realized that the vacuum, the brush bar stopped spinning, which is a major pain in the butt. I've got two Dysons, uh, both of them are the same, DC24s, and both of them have had exactly the same problem. It's a really, really common thing. Um, I've done the what I can to try and repair them. I bought them, well, I bought one secondhand anyway from a local repair shop, trying to obviously recycle things where you can and save a few quid. So I bought the Dyson, I think it was about 100 pounds as a refurbished unit. It has been absolutely fine for what, two years or so? Even when we've been doing building work and drilling, we've used it for all sorts of things. It's had some really abu really hard abuse and we got three cats, so it gets a lot of use, let's be fair. Uh, the other vacuum actually was outside somebody's house on the street, just being thrown away. So I thought, well, I'll take that one for parts. And it turned out it was actually in better condition than my refurbished one after a few years. So uh, I've been using both of them, one upstairs, one downstairs, but they've both of them have given up the ghost. One of them Angel took into her bedroom. Now, for those of you that are regular viewers or you know us personally, you know that Angel's bedroom is an absolute pigsty. Literally, you could grow mushrooms in there. It's just dark, dirty, and horrible. It's nasty. But fair play, she's been trying to sort it out recently, so she's taken a vacuum in there. And I think, I think that was a little bit too much for the vacuum to cope with. Maybe it was a shock to the system to actually see that room for the first time. But whatever the case may be, uh, it's destroyed the vacuums. So I thought a treat. Mrs. Mike's unboxing and myself to a new vacuum. So I went out today and bought the new Dyson uh, Small Ball, which is such a weird name for a vacuum, the Small Ball uh, Multi-Floor. So we got that, that's an upright vacuum. So we do an unboxing review on that. And actually, of all the things I've bought, the Dyson vacuum seems to be the ones I'm actually, I'm more excited for, because I do love a good vacuum. It's, uh, for me, ever since I had my first home, I've been seriously into vacuuming. It's just one of those nice things you can just, zone out, a bit of white noise from the vacuum, and you can just be lost in your thoughts, and the next thing you know, you turn around and it's like, oh, I got a clean house, happy days, I like this. So, really excited for that. But the other one I'm really excited for as well, we've bought the uh, Dyson V7 Motorhead, which is a cordless one. So, rather than having two massive vacuums, one upstairs, one downstairs, we're gonna have the upright one downstairs, and the cordless one's gonna be upstairs, just charging up ready to go, so no lugging stuff up and down the stairs, which is getting a bit dangerous. And me and Kath are getting old. We don't want to be lugging vacuums up and down stairs and tripping over cables. So nice little cordless vacuum. And also it's going to be perfect for vacuuming out PCs and all that kind of stuff. And it's pink. Oh yeah, Kath's, yeah. I, I can see what Kath was saying there. So I bought it, it's a pink vacuum. So you've got to love a pink vacuum. It's happy days. Anyway, so that's it. Let's have a quick look for the, um, let's have a look through the chat. So, uh, what's been said today? So, good evening, everyone. So, uh, Alexa says she likes her 3600 and 3700X, both good chips. Awesome, excellent. I'm really glad to hear that. Um, I'm hoping the 3600 is going to improve my workflow slightly and make rendering a little bit quicker. So, looking forward to that. Uh, Glenn's also, he's happy with the 3600X. I'm hoping that the 3600 is going to overclock to 3600X speeds anyway. Um, that was the theory. Uh, da -da -da. Alessa says, I need to watch the replay before the live show so I know if I said anything stupid again. <laughs> oh dear. 
Uh, yeah, Kaf's just mentioned something actually in the comments there. The dark mode is actually supposed to make your typing accuracy worse because your eyes aren't used to it. Because we've kind of all been programmed to use in kind of Word documents from years ago and databases and then web pages, which have predominantly been black text on a white background, having dark mode actually does something to your visual cortex and makes your fingers go all stupid and you type all kinds of random crap. No, you just notice. You don't notice. And you don't notice it because it doesn't stick out so much. So, um, yeah, is it time that we ditch dark mode, even though we've only just got it? They've been going on about it so much that it, I know why the manufacturers want it, because it makes batteries last longer, because it doesn't have to illuminate as brightly on a screen for a dark background as it does on a light background. Uh, dark backgrounds also cause depression as well. So for us PC enthusiasts, uh, being in a PC enthusiast and spending a lot of time in front of a computer, is a recipe for depression anyway, because you're not getting out and getting sunlight and ex exercise and all those kind of endorphins. Um, so if you've got a dark mode as well on your PC, chances are you're gonna be uh, not feeling great. And especially with winter's kicking in now, dark mode plus winter, plus staying in all day on a PC equals depression. So we're gonna try and eradicate well, that. Ryan Twitter bit said it was like when she lived in Seattle and got slack mood. Oh. Yeah, one of the writers of the article says it was like when she lived in Seattle and, uh, yeah, sad she had sad disease there. Anyway, uh, Aletta says, Mike, you need an 18-inch turntable for PC builds. Now, I have actually got a, I think actually larger than that. Kerry Holzman's got his 18-inch uh, Lazy Susan. I got my 24-inch motorized Doctor Who X-Prop which I um, liberated when they closed down their prop store. So yeah, I've got the electric one, which actually, if you look at the, which one was it? It was, actually, I have done it on a couple of videos design. where it no, spins round. Fractal, fractal design case I did it with, and one of the Cooler Master ones as well, I did it. Um, the Cooler Master, Master Box, Light 3.1. The building that I did on the, uh, the rotating thing. So anyway. Uh, Letta says, I'm not doing dark mode, I'm dyslexic. <laughs> I do feel like I'm becoming dyslexic. I've said this to a few people recently when I'm typing stuff. Like, I type out, if I want to put a name, I'll put M-A-N-E. -E. So I'm kind of getting them right, all the right letters, but not necessarily in the right order, which is terrible. Glenn says he had two Dysons back in the day when there was a lot of buzz, but both broke, never again. Hoover for the win. Now Hoover, I would love to buy Hoover, but unfortunately there was a bad thing with Hoover where back in the 90s, I think it was, they had an offer on so that if you bought a brand new Hoover, they would give you tickets to fly to America. And at the time it was when flights were relatively cheap anyway, but people weren't really buying Hoovers. Now their marketing actually worked out so well that essentially they had far too many people buy them and it virtually bankrupted the company. So Hoover, the actual plant, which was over in an area of South Wales, I believe, um, just, well, just slightly north of South Wales, mid Wales, I guess you'd call it, and the plant eventually closed down. So Hoover's are no longer made in the uh, United Kingdom, which is quite sad. Anyway, moving on. Alessa says, Angel's room sounds like my girlfriend's side of the bedroom. She thinks the floor is the lowest shelf. Yeah, we like to refer to Angel's bedroom floor as the floor drobe, which uh, is pretty uh, pretty much what it is. Oh, Aletta is dyslexic, so she does most of her typing with her eyes closed. I feel like I should do better like that. Glenn says, some adaption needed for dark mode. Katie Zora says, I like my PC bright. Yeah, I, uh, I think I agree, actually. I've been going through the dark mode on various settings. Actually, in uh, Google Chrome, I find that I don't like the dark mode. Windows Explorer, I don't mind too much, but then it seems like massively jarring when you go to something which doesn't support dark mode and it's really bright. So I think my perfect situation is go back to basics, go back to light mode, but actually just turn the brightness down. I think that's just what I should be doing. Uh, Richard says, uh, my 3600 will technically overclock to 4.4 gigahertz on all cores, but requires something like 1.375 to do so. The 4.2 stock clocks are perfectly fine for me. Yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully it will be. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to it. 
I haven't upgraded the CPU in any of my PCs for the longest time now, so it'll be very good to do so. I'm going to drink some of my tea now, I do apologise. I'm not drinking alcohol tonight because I've got a banging headache and I've taken a load of paracetamols and the last thing I need is alcohol because I'll be off my head. Hmm. That's a nice cup of tea. Oh yeah, I didn't say good evening to Richard. Good evening, Richard. And Leslie as well. Leslie Cunney says, hi Mike, giving away anything tonight? Um, unfortunately not. All I'm giving away is my time. And um, possibly a little bit of humour. I'm probably spilling tea over everything I own. Right, let's go through my box of tricks. This is going to be... Uh, for me, this is actually just nostalgia, but I've been meaning to do this for a long time, going through this case and seeing what's in here and chucking out stuff I don't use anymore. Well, I thought it'd actually be a bit of fun and a bit interesting to show you guys what is actually in the case. So I think what I'll do is if I switch to the webcam view and you can have a look and see what's in there and you'll get a better idea of what's in there. I think that's probably going to work. So Logitech cam is on number four, hopefully. Oh, Calf says not on her. There we go. So, there we go. You can see, dun dun dun, catch number one, catch number two. And look at these things, they've aged. That's like 30 years old and it's still, look at that, awesome. Now, oh, there's Calf. She just peeked into the top, I do apologize. Dun dun dun. There we go. So there is the case. And there is all the crap that's in it. You can see our wood burner in the background and a little fan. Hello. Okay, so where do I start? So let's take this out first of all. Now this here is what some of you may not recognize is a CD case. Now inside there is loads of dodgy copies of Windows, which we'll be having a look at. Uh, this is actually a new addition, a bit of a shrink wrap. Do you have or, discs of 95? Oh yes. There. This is my box of screws. So if you're, oh, can't see, can you? If you're using a PC or building PCs all the time, then this is actually a must-have. So flip this open, and you see what's inside. Also, another must-have. I've had this thing since literally 2000. So that is how to wire Cat5 cables. So if you're uh, needing to wire up some Cat5 cables, so on the left-hand side you've got the standard patch cord diagram. And on the other side, I've got my crossover cable. I'm going to print it out nice and big so I can have it at a distance and uh, still work out what I'm doing. So that's pretty cool. Quite useful. And inside this uh, box, this is all my bits and pieces, so handy little bits and pieces. So in that section there, you can see I've got some uh, Cat5 keystones. Is that what they call them? Keystones? Or heads or plugs or whatever. So you can crimp those on. And these little baggies have got loads of like case screws and quick release screws. So quick release screws in there, got screws in there. Electrical tape, black and white, you never know. <laughs> oh, you can't see. Uh, AMD mounting clips, recognize those? How many times have you gone onto a Facebook post or some kind of forum and someone said, has anybody got any of the original AMD clips? I've lost mine. Well, you can have mine if you want them. Uh, Velcro wraps, a couple of those. I think that's a Fitbit. Is that a Fitbit thing? Yeah, that's a Fitbit sync thing. That can go in the bin. Don't use that anymore. So what else we got here? Oh, there's some um, uh, for Cat5 patch cables or patch panels. Blanking plates and screws. Got some standoffs for various water coolers. More screw. Oh, that's actually, that's quite an interesting one. You can't really see. That is for RGB, so if you've got some RGB you need to connect some RGB bits together. That's quite useful, and there's some uh, other grommets in there. Got an absolute ton of motherboard standoffs, various sizes, very handy indeed. And also got some uh, Rio Toro straps, more cables, more screws, more case screws, and in the top here, so alcohol wipe. So this is handy for uh, cleaning up CPUs, all that kind of stuff. Oh, we can't see. So, Orco tip swabs, so they're uh, alcohol wipes, isopropyl alcohol, for external use only, they're quite handy. So if you cut yourself, you can uh, use that, or if you want to clean a processor, you can use that as well. Bit of a super glue, Yoohoo super glue. Very handy indeed. 
And these were actually really handy because I used to do a lot of stuff on a uh, TV set. And we used to put VGA screens up everywhere and feed them from remote laptops. So I used to end up coupling up miles and miles, well not miles, but meters and meters of uh, VGA cables to display to uh, various different display panels. So yeah, we used a couple of those. And this stuff here, you've probably seen this before on the front of magazines. Oh, crap, it's sticky. Oh, you can't see. Sorry, my apologies. This is what is called toffee tape. So it's double-sided tape, but it's really, really sticky, strong stuff. This, uh, some people call it snot tape. But I have a little roll of that. So uh, that is really handy for affixing anything to anything. Case fans, all that kind of stuff. Happy days always works really well on case fans. Actually, if you haven't, if you want to put a case fan somewhere where it's not meant to go, that stuff is brilliant. And what else we've got in here? So we've got more case screws, more, more case screws, all that kind of good stuff. And these are like the ones that come with a motherboard or a case. Sorry, come with the case. So I always keep those. You never know when they come in handy. Uh, we've got my heat shrink, a bit more heat shrink, some twist sticks, cable ties. And if you're going to use heat shrink, then you're going to need a lighter. And it works. Hey! Fire! 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 It is fireworks night after all. So that is my uh, my screws box, which actually has always been very, very, very handy. Very handy indeed. Although saying that, most of the time the screws end up pretty much everywhere around my desk, rather than being in their uh, designated places. So let's put that back in there. I'll probably bored you all to tears of all that stuff. Right, so let's get rid of that, get rid of that. So another useful thing is this little bad boy. So this doesn't always go with me, but this is my kind of uh, walk along one. This is, uh, let's see, ratchet screwdriver, which I bought for Kath, which I liberated from her. And it's really handy because you've got tons of different size torxes, screws, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. And also the, uh, I think it's the six mil, or is it the five mil, five mil. The, uh, the five mil is great for doing the uh, motherboard pillars. And as you can see, that one's got a little bit of sticky in it. So if you uh, unscrew something and you try and pull it out, it actually stays stuck in there. Focus, damn you. So yeah, that's really handy. Okay, so let's go back to, actually, what else we got in here? Oh, this is a good one. See that? That's a pen, but it isn't a pen. It is, sorry, I'm, uns I'm unscrewing. It is actually a USB flash drive, but not only is it a flash drive, if you look really carefully, just above the, uh, the clip, see that little hole? Well, that is a uh, camera. So this is actually a spy pen camera. So you could actually record it on the back. You can see, where is it? That's 10 years old. See the little dots there? There's little notification dots to tell you if it's recording or not. And the button on the top doesn't actually do anything other than turn the camera on and off. So that was a uh, Christmas present from Kath. And I've used that in uh, quite a lot of places actually. And some of the footage I've got off there is uh, quite literally worth its weight in gold. But anyway, I'm digressing again. So what else we've got in here? We've got our Cat5 tester. So let's get that out so you can see what that's all about. Actually, I put this camera somewhere else. No, tell you what, I'll switch back to the other camera. Uh, number two, is it? I can never remember. Yay, number two, that'll do. That'll do for me. Right, so here we go. So this is a Cat5 tester. Now, if you've not seen one of these before, these are actually brilliant. Now, now that home networking is getting more and more popular, especially with like gigabit speeds and all that kind of stuff, uh, this is awesome. So it comes apart, so you put one end, Cat5 cable one end, and Cat5 cable the other end and plug in there. It actually works with uh, RJ11 as well, which is like the telephone ones for ADSL and stuff like that. So all you do is plug a cable in both ends, which I should, I bet I've taken it out of here already. Normally I keep a cable in here as well for testing purposes, but it would appear, that I have taken it out already. But anyway, you plug a cable in both ends, you turn this thing on, and I suppose it's still got the original batteries in there. Yes, and the batteries are still working. 
there's a little flashing light on there. And when, when the cables are in there, it goes down through the cables and to make sure it pairs up. Actually a really, really handy little device, especially if you're cable testing on your ring. So you can leave this kind of upstairs in the loft or whatever and plug it in downstairs and you can plug in different ones and make sure you're getting a uh, straight through connection, which is really cool. And it didn't actually cost a great deal of money. I, I bought this from eBay probably in the early 2000s and uh, I've just had it for ages. It's still on the original battery that I put in there when I got it, a little PP3. Anyway. <laughs> Captain Meets Adventures. Wow, I just realized that you're in a room. I always thought you were in an outhouse with the walls. <laughs> yeah, it's a dunny. <laughs> <laughs> Right, let's go through some of the other tools that I use regularly. So these are things that you should have with you. If you're, if you're out and about mending PCs, this is the kind of stuff you should have. So a SATA cable, definitely handy for diagnosing dry faults. Not so much now with NVMe, but certainly useful to have. A cable crimper. So that's a cutter and a crimper for doing your Cat5 cables. Obviously that goes with the Cat5 stuff. Uh, wiring up cables is, is pretty easy to do actually, but some people think there's a bit of wizardry in it. And there's thousands more of these things for when I used to do a lot of cabling. Aletta doesn't need a cable tester. My wire work is like Nvidia, it just works. Oh, dear. <laughs> and a bag of tweezers, I like that. Bit of a job there. So what else have we got in there? This is, well, the brush, now the brush normally lives in there, so let's put that back in there. This is brilliant. You, everyone should keep one of these for PC repairs and building or reselling. So just brush off the motherboard, brush off the dust, um, gets into fans. If you get a long bristle brush, a soft brush, you'll be amazed at how PC, how PC, how clean you can get a PC just with a simple brush. Uh, do that before you use an air duster, because air dusters cost money, so obviously that's gonna save you a few pounds. Oh, there's a Cat5 cable. Damn it. Oh, you get the idea anyway. Uh, cool. That is an old uh, audio. So that's a 3.5 mil jack to RCA audio. So that was useful when I used to go and set up home theaters and stuff like that. So you could plug the three and five point mil jack in the back of the PC and plug in the phono adapters into like a hi-fi or something like that or some kind of amplifier. Uh, yeah. When people didn't have like 5.1 audio surround sound systems, but maybe they had an old amplifier, that was perfect. Loved using that. Wire strippers, very handy. Stubby screwdriver, reversible. Again, very handy. You do find nowadays a lot of motherboards, they've got the, um, the mounting pillars in quite awkward places to get. So you either need an extremely long screwdriver or you need an extremely small one so you can get in past the kind of edges of the case. So stubby screwdriver is always very handy or a flexible one. That is handy as well. Oh dear, spare bit of cable. Now you can see where I've been chomping at the ends on that. So actually that's a bit useless. So that ain't gonna bin. Now this is the connector section. I've got lots of these, lots and lots of these because you never knew what you were gonna come up against. Quite often, oh, there's another one of those, that's a chopped off SATA connector. Get rid of that. Oh goodness, there is a lot of stuff there. It's funny actually, a lot of this stuff I haven't seen for such a long time. Right, connectors anyway. So, wow, there's a good one. So back in the day when uh, people didn't have enough USB ports on the case or on the back of the PC, you can actually plug these into the headers. So just a standard USB header, and that would add another two USB 2.0 parts, 2.0 ports on the back of the PC in the, uh, in your PCI blanking space area, which most of you probably know as PCI Express blanking plates. Some of us are old enough, we'll remember them as being ISA or PCI or, what was the other one? ELSA, I think, is it ELSA or VESA? VESA, yeah, VESA local bus ports. Wow, that's going back. So those were really handy, especially when USB started becoming more of a thing and people maybe only had two ports on the back of a motherboard, which 
as she was the case on a lot, Packard Bell, Hewlett Packard, Compaq, all those kind of PCs, they'd have the keyboard and mouse port, COM port, printer port, all that kind of stuff, two USB ports, but if they had a printer and a scanner and then maybe a mouse, then you'd run out of ports. So one of these or a hub was useful. And quite often you could buy these for a couple of pounds and you could take them to a customer and you could quite easily charge kind of 10, 15 pounds, make a nice bit of money on those. Very, very useful. Uh, that was also quite good. Remember those? You used to come with Microsoft mice that converted PS2 to USB. So if somebody had a PS2 port or um, a USB port, which they thought was a bit iffy, then you could plug it into the USB, plug it into the PS2 port just to confirm whether it was the port that was dead or the mouse or whatever. You get the idea. Uh, that was quite a blast in the past. So this is a four pin Molex and SATA. That's probably SATA one actually. It probably would have been back then. Um, which converts then to your standard hard drive connections on the back there. So you plug that into your drive, power it up from a Molex rather than a SATA, and SATA data into the motherboard. Again, older PCs that I used to work on in the early 2000s, quite often they either didn't have a SATA connection for if you're swapping out a drive. When SATA first came out, there's very few power supplies that actually had a SATA connector. So things like that were actually really useful. And going on to that, there's I've got a host of those things there. So this is a, if you've got a PC which hasn't got a Molex, which is not often these days, but it does happen. So that takes a SATA connection and converts it into a four pin Molex. This is the opposite way around. So if you've got an old power supply and you're again, you're putting a SATA drive into a, an older computer. So that would convert a four pin Molex into a five pin SATA. And that one was if you only had one connection or you wanted to put two drives in, that actually split a four pin Molex into two SATA. You used to get through a lot of those, you can tell. So then moving on a little bit closer to uh, modern day. So that was to convert a graphics card. So if you only had a PCIe six pin, you could plug that into the six pin connector and as if by magic, it would double the pins and give you the PCI Express eight pin which a lot of early cards wouldn't actually boot unless they had the extra ground in on the extra two pins on the side. So again, that was a lifesaver. So if you've gone to a customer's house and they've just upgraded a graphics card or they, you, they've asked you for an upgrade and you've taken the upgrade part with you, the last thing you wanted was their power supply not to be able to power up the graphics card. Despite asking the customer, quite often they don't either know, don't care, or possibly give you bum information. So taking one of these with you was always super, super helpful and could quite often get you out of a jam. And possibly again, it's one of those little add-on sales. So if a customer didn't have one, you could say, well, you really need a new power supply, but if you want, I can put one of these adapters on and you can add a couple of quid to the bill. Very handy. Now this is again, a similar situation. So customers have an upgrade, their old power supplies and you got the four pin, uh, ATX connector or ATX power connector, the CPU connector at the top, and that would convert that into an eight pin, which actually doesn't do a great deal, to be honest with you. I don't know how that would actually work. Possibly it does, but I don't quite understand how, because there's only a certain amount of power going into there to split into four. So I think that's more of a cosmetic thing, or again, if there was a, a more modern board which wouldn't boot because it didn't have the extra four pins, which I don't think I've ever seen yet. Uh, again, that can be useful, possibly. Mm -hmm. And the last but not least, so if you had a, a power supply which had two six pin PCI Express connectors, uh, but didn't have an eight pin, and again, it's that old story, it won't boot unless you've got both the extra pins connected, that can converted two six pin PCI Express into a single eight pin PCI Express, which actually is uh, the perfect situation because you're getting plenty of power through both of those six pin connectors because they've hopefully come off separate rails on the power supply. So your eight pin connector for your high powered graphics card is gonna get all the juice it needs. <sighs> right, that's connectors out of the way. Have I bored you all to death yet? Let's see. Custom Adventurous, that's a beautiful brush. Thank you, mate. Custom Adventurous, check out his channel. 
does all kinds of unboxings on AirPods and stuff. And um, actually, Customer Adventurous, while you're here, it's, uh, it's interesting. What are you thinking about the AirPod Pros now they're out? Are we going to be out of business? Is the AirPod videos going to die kind of almost overnight? Because uh, probably you as well as me, we've built our channel up with quite a lot of AirPod content. So for that to kind of disappear where people lose interest almost overnight, a bit worrying, but we'll see. Skystalker's in the house, good evening to you. I let's uh, have a one box with a couple of dozen Intel and Ryzen box coolers. I never use them. Funny enough, uh, where are they? You pass them over, Calf. Oh, Ryzen coolers. Oh, that's right, don't worry. These? Yeah. Aletta, I know where you're coming from. I'm starting to get a collection of these myself now. I do try and that's, <coughs> that was a bit high pitched. I do try and use them wherever possible just to get rid of the damn things. But anyway. Uh, Dra Dragos, Dragos Blair, Dragos Blair, whatever. Good evening, how you doing? Now this actually, if anyone can tell me what motherboard that came out of and the era, there'll be brownie points in it. So it is a SATA cable, it's right angled and it is a SATA 2 cable. So if you can tell me which motherboard manufacturer that came from and approximately the year, or if you can give me one of the models actually, I'd be very impressed. I'll give you a few seconds to catch up on that one. So cable ties, loads of cable ties. Cable ties, or tweezers as they're known on The Verge. Black cable ties, white cable ties, because hey, you never know. You could need either. Another SATA cable. Is there more SATA stuff in here? No, I don't think there is. Oh yeah. A tiny SATA cable for little mini micro PCs. Well, there's a lot of people saying ASUS at the moment. ASUS H61, P67. Matthew Day says, sorry I'm late. That's okay, that's what rewind button's for, but don't worry, it's all good. Captain Me's Adventures, Ebony and Ivory. It certainly is Ebony and Ivory. So actually there's a, a ton of cable ties in here and uh, oh, another SATA cable. Anybody need any SATA cables? Ah, now actually this is gonna give away now. So this is the, um, this is the IDE cable or enhanced IDE cable which actually does partner with that cable. So if you can recognize what manufacturer used that color coding on their IDE cables and the SATA cable, then you'll have that totally licked. And I think someone's actually said in the comments already. But we'll have another look in a minute. So what else we got in here? Wow, cable, got more USB cables, so Old style micro. This was always a good one. This now, because I, I was essentially running a business or working for someone who had a business, things like this were always super handy. So this is just a normal USB cable, um, type A to type B for plugging in things like printers and um, hubs, all that kind of stuff. But the amount of times that you'd go to someone to do a job and they'd have bought something like um, a USB modem or something for the ADSL or broadband. And you get there and they got it and say, oh, you haven't got a USB cable. And they're like, well, I can't use that one because that's on the printer and I need that to print my invoices. I can't use that one because that goes to the scanner and that's for scanning the invoices and emailing. That one's for the fax machine, I can't use that one. So to always have a USB cable. And again, it's another one of those little chargeable extras you could stick on the bill which I didn't really like doing half the time because most people are pretty sound and you don't want to like say, well, I can sort you out USB cable or a couple of quid or whatever. But again, it's little things like that which can help keep a business ticking over. Not that I'm particularly business minded, I've got to be honest. Hey, more screws. Now that is an entire bag of chrome thumb screws in there. So if anybody wants to think, actually I know what case that come off. That's from the Antec P900 leftovers from that. I need to go through all this crap, I really yeah, do. Oh, on the cable, that was from 
Oh, I forgot which board it was now. It was a, it was a, it was a gigabyte. Whoever said gigabyte, it was a gigabyte motherboard, and it was the the GA. Oh God. I can, How can you ask a question, Dave? It was a GA seventy eight LMT, which was a AM three board. They did actually use them on older ones as well. So if you'd have said the older um, Intel eleven fifty five chipset from Gigabyte as well, then you'd have been right on that as well. And actually, saying that, I've got a sneaking suspicion. Now thinking about it, I think these pale blue ones actually did come with ASUS as well at one point, but that particular one was from uh, Gigabyte. Actually, no, I'm, I'm lying. That was Gigabyte. That was ASUS. So, yeah. Whoever said ASUS and whoever said Gigabyte, you're both right. Or you're all right. Whichever. Jack Thomas is in the house. Good evening to you, Jack Thomas. <laughs> Jack Thomas says, is the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo a good cooler to get? Uh, yeah. If it's, um, if it's cheap, if it's any more than about the equivalent of £20, I would say probably not. Um, but worrying about that sort of money, you're okay. Hopefully that answers your question. Now these were always handy to have. Case fans, that is an old Cooler Master 80 mil case fan. Drago says recently got a, a smaller one. Mm. M.2 drive it failed after three days. Ooh, that sucks. Dragos, sorry to hear about your M.2 drive. That's bad luck, that is, mate. Uh, Glenn says the Arctic Freezer 34CO is probably cheaper. Yeah, it probably is actually. And arguably a little bit better. Similar, but better. <laughs> right. So this was also really handy. Now, there should be two of these. I can't see the other one in there. But that, I don't know if you can make it out properly, is a Cat5 splitter. So most modern, well, not modern, most Cat5 cables only use four of the pins for transmitting and receiving data on the 10, 100 uh, setup. If you're using gigabit, then it does use all of them. But that was a doubler. So if you went to someone and they maybe had a five port hub and they had something else they needed to wire in, or maybe they've only got one cable going through a wall and they can't get another cable through, then you could plug in one, well, two of these, and yeah, you could split the cable. So you split it on one end, split it on the other, plug both ends into your hub, the other two ends into two PCs, and you could connect two PCs, whereas previously you possibly couldn't. Again, quite useful. When you're out in the field doing PC repairs in people's homes, businesses, and all that kind of stuff. Damn, I sound like Kerry Holzman. Maybe you should drink a Coke. Hmm. Ah, Tristan Arthur's in. Evening, Tristan. Hmm. Sorry, that's a good cup of tea. Um, right, what else we got in here? This is really, really useful. Now, I've had this from pretty much when I first started building PCs. This is a Draper 5mm hex wrench. And this was perfect for putting in the standoffs in motherboard cases. Now, these days, it's not too bad because most good cases, actually, even some of the cheaper ones nowadays, come with the um, the bolts pre-installed. But if you're maybe doing a micro ATX build in an ATX case and you need to move the pillars or vice versa, then these are really handy, very strong, and you get a really nice feel for where they are. It holds them, excuse me, it holds them really well and you get, it's just a nice thing to use to take out of the standoffs. I hate to see people with kind of like pliers or more grips or whatever, trying to wrench them in and out. It's so easy to round them off. So using one of these, it's, it's all about finesse. And using one of these is really nice, especially if you're, again, you're doing it at a business or you're doing it in front of a customer. And the last thing you wanna be doing is like this cack-handed stuff or dropping screws. Whereas with this, it's magnetic, so you can put your pillar in there and screw with confidence, which is always good. Um, what else we got here? It is euphemism, yeah. So side cutters, always have some side cutters. Very, very good thing to have. In fact, have lots of scissors. I've got two I pairs. Got Actually, I've got three pairs. Of, we bought three pairs of scissors at the same time, and it looks like they've all ended up essentially in my uh, in my yeah, stuff. Do you want them back? I'll give them. There, there is a giveaway on today's video. I've given my scissors to Kath. 
That's a sign of true love that is right there. Oh, that's where they went. And my other side cutters. Oh no, yeah, they were in there. All right, they can go back in there. I like those ones. Uh, I'll have a look at some questions. We're getting towards the end of what's in there now, <laughs> luckily. Dragos Bear now has to reinstall graphics drivers on the new M.2 drive, and guess what? Not compatible with Windows 10. Oh, that sucks. Captain Meets Adventure says, Mike, were you like the IT guy in the office? No, I was more like the, um, I was more like, um, actually the, yeah, the IT guys, the British sitcom one. What was that called? Was it the IT? The IT crowd. It, the IT crowd, watching the IT crowd actually resonates so much. I uh, can't think what a guy's name is now. He did the gadget show. He did the gadget show as well. Uh, Adewadi, is that his name? I can't think, isn't it? Something Adewadi. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, yes. Actually, saying that, my life story if you watch, um, there was a, a program which was taking the Mickey out of the BBC, which was, what was that called, Kath? Oh, it was rubbish. Like, e West, of... West 17 or something. It was basically taking the mickey out of the BBC and how it's like they're having meetings about a meeting and all that kind of stuff. So if you combine, if you combine that program with the IT crowd, if you mingle the two together, that is pretty much what being a techie is, is like for most people. Richard Adiardi, that's the one. Thank you, Renew. <laughs> yeah, that is the one. Yeah, totally. The, um, you do get that. People phone up and it's like, my printer won't print. Okay, so you go through all the usual things, turn it on, turn it back off, yeah, yeah, done all that. Yeah, it's not printing, there's a flashing light on it. All right, what does the flashing light say? Is there any writing next to it? Yeah, it says uh, paper out. Okay, is there any paper in the machine? No, should there be? It's a printer, it's, yeah. Try putting some paper in there. Oh yeah, it works now, great, thanks for that. No problem, speak to you tomorrow. <laughs> and it was like that quite often. Yeah. In fact, actually, yeah. The, at one point, I was in an office, and there was at least five people stood around a printer, trying to work out how to make it work, and all of them with varying degrees of dumbness, dumbness and lack of knowledge, and stupidity, almost to the point of where they packed it up and were trying to put it back in the box to send it back. <sighs> yeah. And then they found the power switch. Dear God. I know some people, like, technology isn't their thing, but sometimes it does kind of beg a belief. Anyway, move... Oh, there's another SATA cable. I'm giving away SATA cables. Anybody want a SATA cable? A Sharpie. Always useful to have a Sharpie. Especially if you're working on someone's case and it's black and you accidentally scratch it. Sharpie covers in all those indiscretions. <laughs> I sound like a right cowboy, don't I? Yeehaw! So, oh, this was another useful one actually. Fan splitter, not so much these days, but Molex to dual um, three pin. So for connect up a fan, if someone's fan header blew up on their PC, which actually used to happen, fan headers used to just stop working and PCs would start overheating. So plug one of those into a Molex. This was actually designed so that it only gives out five volts rather than your 12 or 7.5 or whatever you can program them to. So it wouldn't sound like a jet engine. So that was really handy and saved you replacing a motherboard in some cases, which if again, you're running a business, you've got your software on there, which has been custom configured for whatever your program is, or maybe you've got Sage or QuickBooks or whatever it is, and it's all set up. You don't want to mess with it. You just want it to be fixed as quickly as possible and with minimal fuss. So a new motherboard is generally out of the question. So little fixes of that, very, very good indeed. So big screwdriver, smaller screwdriver, insulated screwdrivers, lots of screwdrivers. Have I got anything to sort out as floppy? Um, I possibly have. Yes, a tough brush. A tough brush is also a really handy thing. Now, the amount of times I use, the, no, not this actual one, but a tough brush, 
just cleaning up ports on the back of things or um, what was the Molex connectors? For some reason, Molex connectors used to just lose connectivity. I think it's because the pins were always rubbish. And for some reason, I could always give them a brush, both sides, and it used to do the trick for me. So that toothbrush is helpful. And also, if you've got a case of like bad coffee breath, then you can just go for your life. Long nose tweezers or pliers, very handy. Circuit tester. 12 volt circuit tester. Now this actually is really good for power supplies. So you could plug that onto a ground somewhere. And this actually inside of here is, Christ, that's always welded shut, is a really, 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 really fine pin. So you could get your wires and you could either touch the prongs carefully, or if you couldn't get to those, you could actually pierce the wire, just stick the pin into the wire. It's actually supposed to be for a car, but again, it's 12 volts, so it works the same. So you could use that for fault finding. So if you had a server, you take the top off it and you look in, there's like wires and stuff everywhere and you don't want to take it apart, you really don't. And you don't really want to power it down unless you absolutely have to. So you could quite often grind it out or get it connected to another earth somewhere or whatever. And you could just prong or prod the cables and wait till the, uh, the light in the side there lit up. And if it did, you knew you had power and you could keep on going through the system until you get to a point where there's no longer any power. And then you could work out where your bad cable was. So it's pretty much old school stuff, but actually still is quite useful today. <laughs> actuators or actuate, actuator, actuate, I can't, I don't even know what the word is. Basically these are for cable modems. So these go on the uh, F type connector, like satellite connectors. And if you're getting a bad connection or you're getting too much of a signal, then these can either boost or reduce the signal to make your internet work much, much better. Those are quite handy and some, I didn't have a tester to work out if the signal was too good or too bad. Uh, so it's basically a bit of hit and miss, but the modem itself, if you log into your cable modem, you can look at the stats and it'll tell you your attenuation or what is that word? A-T-T-E-N-U-A-T-O-R, attenator. Like a terminator, but not. Anyway, two of those, they were quite useful. We've had about 12 of them. Uh, torque screwdrivers, blah, 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 etc., etc. I think that's pretty much it. There's not really much more left in here. It's all junk, really. A GPU holder for saggy graphics cards. Might work with a soppy, a soppy floppy. Ah, that's what I was looking for earlier. These are quite handy. Again, fan header splitters. So again, got a motherboard. It's only got one fan header on it, but you need to put two fans in because the PC is getting too hot. You can stick those on. Those are quite new additions, actually. They're quite useful especially for modern builds where you've got lots more fans and potentially less, um, what's it called? Another spanner for taking out the uh, pillars from the boards. This one was actually quite good because you've got that bend in it. So if you've got a case where the pillar is like directly underneath where the, f the lip goes over the top, you could just get it in there and you could have a bit of a, bit of an angle on it. So that was pretty cool. That is pretty much it to be honest with you. I think that is a, uh, that is all the stuff. So, who wants to see all my dodgy software in my box? I'll have a look at some of the questions and I'll try and pack away some of this crap. Right, let's have a look, see what's going on here. Where have I got to now? Oh, I know the guy, yeah, I see, because the guy that now does the crystal maze, yeah, Matthew Day, that was right. A letter says, I know the guy, but he doesn't know me. That was uh, one of the Craze famous sayings, wasn't it? The, uh, the Craze brothers, if you're not sure, Reggie and Ronnie, they were gangsters in London. And one of, one of them was asked, do you know the Beatles? And he said something along the lines of, no, but I believe they know me. And I thought that was pretty cool. That's a cool line. British Noob says, I have a tech issue. Bless you. What is it? Tell me about it. Tell me your problems. Captain Meets Adventures, Mike, do you ever go to PC World and burn the <laughs> and burn the staff's head in? Um, he means going and asking lots of technical questions. Oh, asking technical questions. I I did try doing that. I, I've the trouble is with PC World now, there's a very there's a very kind of 
a big split in the staff in PC World, especially our local one, which is in Cribs Causeway in Bristol. You go in there and there's there's the obvious kind of, not deadheads, but the people that don't really want to be there, but they've got put food on the table, they've got to pay their bills, they've got to look after family, friends, relatives, whatever it is, they need to earn money. So they get a job in PC World, they don't particularly enjoy it, but it pays the bills, they're on the checkout or whatever, or they're just in the stock room. They're not interested in tech or anything they sell, That's but it's they're, tech they're just doing their there. stuff. Also, like Kath just saying, um, there is, whoa, I got, way. sorry, I was turning the lights out. The British noob has stuck his hand in his pockets or credit card in his phone or <laughs> finger on the button or whatever it is, and has sent us a super chat. So you get a disco lights, my friend. Thank you very much. Is appreciated. It's what? for a hair transplant. It's for it's for a hair transplant. Just one. Just one. Oh, thanks for that. <laughs> Thank you. Super chats are appreciated. We um we do what we can here to try and keep this channel going and keep it interesting and do things a bit differently. I don't want to be doing what all the other YouTubers do, so this is why I do stuff like this because it's kind of it interests me. So hopefully it interests you in. Well, you get the idea. Anyway, let's turn the lights back on. Oh, bright light. Anyway, you get the idea. So thank you very much, I just appreciate it. But yeah, PC World staff. So yeah, there's two sides. There's the ones that don't really want to be there, but have got to be there because they got their money. And I completely get that, I understand it, because people got to put food on the table. Been there, done that. It's uh... But then you get the other ones who are like really into it and really geeky. But unfortunately for them, because they get moved around the store quite a lot from different areas, Wait, who's done that? There's another. Or is it the same one, it's just gone funny? <laughs> it's not come up, oh, my screen's gone dead. Oh, it's the British Noob. He's a sellout if you give him money. <laughs> right, British Noob, stop it right now. Oops, sorry. Because otherwise you'll bankrupt yourself. Oh, he stole his mum's money. Oh, that's all right, you carry on. We're quite happy with that. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, the other side of it, PC World staff, there's ones that know what they're doing or there's ones that are really geeky and into their stuff. But unfortunately, there's, they're far and few between. So you don't always get the right person. And you'll quite often say, if you go into a store and you have a good experience, then you won't necessarily... Oh, my goodness. Calf's poor bottom. She's having to get up and down all the time. Good. Only, I've only got one light on today. There's a bit of a, is there a, oh, there's a delay in that as well. That's why I can't see it. Oh, I've done me chatting again. Oh, how do I always manage to do that somehow? Ah, there it is. Anyway, you get the idea. So yeah, people in PC world, some of them are actually really intelligent and know what they're doing. Some of them are just there to earn money, which again, you can totally understand. Oh, Noob, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, if, if you break my lamp, I'm gonna be upset and I'll bill you for it. <laughs> no, you'll be a broke. He's gonna be a broke back British Noob soon. Broke back British Noob. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's, <laughs> Mike, no, that's not me. Thank you, Sky. <laughs> Sky says, we are here because we are interested, Mike and Kath. Bless you. And Captain Meeks Adventure says, Mike, this is better than the shite on Saturday Night TV. Which is ironic because I used to make some of that TV that went on Saturday Night TV, so yes! <laughs> Up yours, BBC. Oh, did I say that out loud? That was supposed to be just in my head. Oops. Yeah. I haven't even had a drink. Um, yeah, so... PC World, I went there today actually, and oh my, what is going on? Is that, oh, damn it, here we go. Who is that? Oh, Paul, thank you, this, uh, you guys, seriously. <laughs> Glenn's give us two, <laughs> Glenn's give us two pounds for the broke back comment. <laughs> hey, if I knew this was gonna be this easy, I'd have taken the piss out of the British noob earlier. <laughs> Oh, British noobs, oh no. This is gonna get out of hand. 
Poor old calf, she's been at work all day in her poor bottom. I've done a six day week. <laughs> hey, happy, happy Smurfs in the house. Good evening. How are you doing, Smurf? Hope you're doing well. Sky Stalker says it's going to be one of those nights, isn't it? Yeah, I think it, uh, it might end up being that way. <laughs> Thank you all. You're very kind. Very daft, but very kind. Uh, yeah, so PC Royal staff, um, yeah. I actually, I applied for a job at PC Road and I didn't get it. Oh my, dear. don't come in the game. <laughs> oh, this is gonna get out of hand. All right, you guys fight over who's gonna give the money and I'll just pack my stuff away. Just pretend I'm not here. But another tool actually in my uh, my kit, this is a Cronin tool. Now, if you ever, have you ever put together a rack, on the back of a rack where the plugs <laughs> normally would terminate, you push that in and that's what puts the, cables in for networking. Anyway, one day I might do a video on that. Aletta would send some money, but she's just bought a new bed because she wore the last night. Aletta says she would have put some, she would send a few dollars, but I just ordered a new bed because we wore out the old one. <laughs> All that naughty, naughty, sexy time. Right, let's go through and have a quick look at my dodgy case of CDs. <laughs> Oh dear, naughty new. Okay. Sky Stalker and Aletta do tell. You're gonna have to get you guys a room or something. Right, let's have a look at my, uh, and in fairness, all the CDs that are about to be shown, I do have the licenses for, or had the licenses for, at the time where I was actually using them. So these purely now are for nostalgic purposes and not for use. So, uh, <laughs> Happy Smurf says, Mike, from an angle, all those tools around you look like a bit like a bold MacGyver. <laughs> well, I'll take that as a compliment, I think. Right, let's start at the beginning. So in the book, obviously, this is in chronological order from when I was using these. So first of all, we've got Windows 95, uh, OSR2, so that's official, service release two, because they didn't have service packs back then. And that is the one that actually had USB support, so you could actually get things working with USB. So that is a blast from the past. Uh, Windows 98, full install. <laughs> Windows 98, first edition. Windows 98, second edition. And, probably shouldn't show you this, actually, I don't matter. <laughs> Fresh news out again. Nutter. So there is a license key which I've kept, which you can feel free to use if you want to, because it's Windows 98. So actually, if you want to use it for a virtual machine, feel free. If the camera ever focuses on it, it probably won't. So that is for Windows 98 second edition. And there's also another one for Windows 98 second edition. So if you want license keys, knock yourselves out. Or if you want modern license keys, then head on over to one of our sponsors, premiumcds.com, use the discount code Mike's Unboxing to get 10% off. What a shameless plug that was. But actually in all seriousness, if you do want license keys, which I will be doing for this build I'm doing for my friend Glenn, we will be heading over to premiumcdkeys.com and he wants Office and he wants Windows uh, 10 retail version. So we'll be getting those for him from them. Right. <laughs> British noob told you he's a sellout. I am totally a sellout. Hey, we all got to make money. Calf, jump up. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I don't know how to help with that. <laughs> when did your name become Calf? Oh, I should probably look that up. What the hell's going on? Oh, I'm scared now. Captain Meese Adventures says, um, <laughs> you, you'll have Bill Gates knocking on your door. Yeah, be all right, you can come on in. I'll get the trampoline out for him. Next one up, there's a genuine disc. Windows Millennium Edition. I love Windows Millennium Edition. And just to prove I'm legit, there is the license key for it also. It's amazing that I've actually got all these. Don't care. 
and I was so sad back in the day that I, f I was paranoid that I'd lose my license keys. So I actually wrote them down on paper as well and put it in my book just in case. It's very sad. Right, what have we got next? So Windows 2000 Professional with... I, th I think that's got Windows... Oh, that's the one in two processor edition. There's a Service Pack 4 update for it. <laughs> British Noobs at it again. The last time I paid this much, it was for sexy time. Oh dear. And there was Service Pack 3 as well. So that's Windows 2000. So we've got 95. I didn't have the, the very first 95 because that was on floppy disks. And obviously, trying to get floppy disks into a CD case ain't easy. So we're moving up in the world a little bit now. Captain Me's Avengers, Mike, celebrities on a trampoline, perfect TV, you are like Simon Cowles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did, there's one thing I want to do. I see your trousers. If, it, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. At one point, if I can, it's, uh, I would love to do this, Saturday Night TV, the Mike's Unbox In, where basically we do all the unboxings in a pub. <laughs> God, British Noob, stop it. And before you answer, before you question, I paid my girlfriend not a hooker. <laughs> oh dear. Happy Smurf says, I also have four CD DVD holders, just like yours. One with different windows, one with different Linux, one with utility tools and one with antiviruses. Jesus, that's a lot of stuff. So next up, Windows XP Professional and Windows XP Home Upgrade. License keys written on the disks. And also Windows XP Home Upgrade, including Service Pack 2. Whew, struth. What else have we got in here? XP Corporate, chuck that away. <laughs> oh, what is going on now? Well, you paid the hooker to be a girlfriend on. No. Yeah, two weeks of straight depression incoming for noob. Dear God. Captain Meese Adventure says, oh God, yes, I would love that. You could review beers and snacks as well as PC repairs. Well, that was the thing. <laughs> Zamra is getting uh, epileptic fits now. Actually, we should have had a warning on the start of the video. Warning, this video may concern strobing effects which may be harmful to people who suffer seizures. Is that what it says? You say on the weed, didn't it? Yeah, so what I want to do is get a pub, basically do unboxings in the pub, but also have an outdoor area so that all the people that gave us stuff to unbox and review, we did giveaways, and we had pub games to try and get a winner. So like spinning round about 10 times and then the first person to touch a post over the other side of the green would win a TV, that kind of crazy stuff. What do you think? I think that's a great idea. Sky Stalker says you're making quite the hourly wage, Mike. I know, I do seem to be, it's uh, the British noob. Now he's gonna be complaining on the Discord server. By the way, Discord server links in the description below. Please feel free to join. It is free. <laughs> Um, yeah, British Noob is going to change his username to poor British Noob again this week. I can see it happening. No, the British Broke Back. <laughs> the Broke British Back Noob. Something like that. Right, XP Pro 64 bit. Ooh, that was horrendous. Ah, uh, this is getting better. So, Windows Media Center, the MSDN version, because I was subscribed to MSDN, the developer network. Uh, Media Center 20, 2005. I don't know why I keep any of this stuff, really. It is purely for prosper uh, prosperity. Yeah. Windows 98 boot disk for the floppies. Wait, there's a floppy disk, everybody. Remember those? That's all right, it's floppy. And Norton Ghost 9.0. Now, on this disk was um, a ghosted image of Windows 98 second edition, which had the registry key for the user name and registry, no, the product key and product name and registered keeper 
were removed from the registry. So when you booted it up for the first time, it would come up with a splash screen saying to put in your username and your Windows key. And then once you've done that, you go back into Windows and all the drivers and stuff were preloaded. Fantastic that was. We used to sell PCs like they were going out of fashion. And they were all ghosted with pretty much the same image and you just supply with a new disc, Windows key stuck on the side, happy days. Good times my friends, good times. Uh, oh dear. Take it on the antique road chain. Not doing that one. Now that's got the wrong thing in there. Here is a genuine service pack two from the front of PC Pro magazine. Mm, don't know. Small business server two thousand. Can't do it. It's BBC, my friend. Now this is Office XP Small Business Edition, and again, license keys written down on a bit of paper. So sad. I did have the genuine disc for all this stuff, but it was like obviously in the boxes and stuff, so I didn't want to take this around with me. Uh, that was one I got from my friend Chris. Oh, there's my license key for Windows 8, I think that was. A retail one. Now this one was actually worth a ton of money back in the day. So this was Microsoft Small Business Server 2000, one to four CPU with five user cows. If anybody wants to use it, feel free. I'll leave it there. So if you'd have bought that back in the day, I keep on saying back in the day, but a uh, small business server 2000 would have probably cost you in the region of about 500 pounds. And you could buy additional user cows or seats on the server sort of thing. And they were probably another 500 quid as well. So small business server, I used to love that. That was great. So you had uh, an exchange server, a web server, and the main user server all built into one little server. It was great stuff. Windows 8, Windows 8, more Windows 8. I, this is where I started losing interest. And this one is a, <laughs> a fire display DVD. So that was actually just to display a log fire on a screen, which was for a customer for something. I can't remember why, but they, it on the fire. they wanted it. I, yeah, I'm going to chuck it on the fire. Oh, and there's all my licensing keys, but I'm not show that out too much. Though saying that's probably fine. PC diagnostics, ghost discs, PC anywhere. Oh my god, need for speed underground. I did buy it, honest. Microsoft Madness, uh, Nero 7 Essentials. How many of you have had that when you bought a CD burner? That has got to bring back some memories for some of you out there. Come on. That is the one. Mike, please give away Windows 8. Mike, give away Windows 8. I would love to. I don't think anyone would have it. And that was also what you'd get in a DVD burner. You'd get your own copy of Power DVD, so you could actually watch DVDs without having to buy a separate decoding software. Amazing. Full of nostalgia, this. Absolutely full of nostalgia. Unbelievable. Right. I think I've bared my soul enough at the moment. What do you think? What do you reckon? Are these the tools of a techie, do you, would you say? Or is it the, uh, the things of a delusional person? What's the, let's have a look, what's going on? Here? Moves in a bit of a depressed mood now, because he's poor. <laughs> let's have a read of these comments. Pixabyte says hello. Good evening. Hiya. <laughs> Mike says, uh, Mike says, Captain Meese Adventure says, Mike, take your box on the Antiques Roadshow. <whistles> for those of you outside of the UK, Antiques Roadshow is a program which has been on UK TV for millenniums and is basically where people try and make some money out of their old people, relatives, by nicking their stuff, taking it to see a, a geezer, he tells them how much it's worth and they pretend to be shocked. Ooh, is it really worth £5,000? I would have never have guessed. Bullshit, you knew it was worth 5,000 pounds. You looked it up before you went on the program and they've already told you this before in the pre-roll, before they've done it. You've sat down and they've scripted what you're about to say. That's how TV works, people. 
So they have to pretend to be shocked. It's like day two on the Great British Bake Off, they've still got the same clothes on. Yeah. Kaf says, it's like Br Great British Bake Off. If you look at day two on the Great British Bake Off, they're wearing the same clothes as they did on day one. And... Who'd have thunk it? Location, 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 they do that. Pixabyte says, NT Lite, best modified ISO. <laughs> British Noob says, I started with like 63, now I'm poor. But I'm not so much. <laughs> Although saying that, Google's probably going to take a load of it, so we're paying Google, the Uber Lords. Pixabyte says, I modified 1909 Windows, 1.78 gigabytes without bloats. Pretty cool. <laughs> Glenn says that the noob can wipe the tears away with his receipts. Unfortunately, he can't afford to print them now. Damn. Captain Meat, give away Windows 8. I wish I could. And Nero Burning Rom. Yeah, I think most people remembered Nero Burning Rom. Alessa says, all you really need is a Swiss army knife, hopefully with a screwdriver in it. I did used to have one of those in here, but I think I gave it to some guy who came around ages ago because he said he was building a PC for some video. Paul Before UK says, I have a Nero 9 here on disc. Zamra says, yep, Nero 7. Hated it, but it did the job. Yeah, I think Nero... I think Nero 5 or 6 was probably the best of all of them, and then after that it just got massively bloated and added in loads of stuff that really you didn't need. Um, they had a utility where you could use a CD rewrite ball or a DVD rewrite ball and use it almost like you would a USB flash drive. So you could drag it to it and drop it within Windows. That was uh, pretty cool. But normally it just ruined PCs. Matthew Day says, nah, Dickinson's real deal. Yeah, we could take it on there. Captain Meeks Adventures, Mike, you have spoiled the Antiques Roadshow. Sorry. Katie Zora says BRB. She's gone to look for her old discs now. British Noob says, how about Mike? You buy me a takeaway. Okay. You have to PM me your address and I'll send you some Just Eat. Wonder if I can get them to sponsor. <laughs> Captain Meets Adventures says Mike best operating system question mark question mark question mark question mark question mark question mark um, whew, that's a tough one the best operating system I would say probably for its time arguably Windows 2000 Service Pack 4 and I'll explain why that is. It was reliable, more so than Windows ME and 98 SE, which was around at the time. It was secure, because obviously you got the NT login and the NT kernel, which was inherently more secure. It did take up more room and it did take up more resources. So it wasn't quite as nippy, but you could tweak it so it would become a little bit more speedy. So. I would say at the time for actually making the PC experience a little bit more enjoyable, I would say Windows 2000 Service Pack 4, which is probably not going to be a popular choice. But I think that was the first time where I realized that you could play games on a PC and use it as a business tool or work tool without all that kind of fluff. And it was actually pretty good. And also, if you wanted to, then you could join to a server and all that kind of stuff. Most people back then probably didn't want to do all that, but I found it nice that you could. You could join a domain, or you could have a standalone machine, or you could have a decent work group and mapped folders and all that kind of stuff. And I thought it was really good. So I would say of its era, Windows 2000, um, modern day, it's got to be Windows 10, purely because it's constantly evolving. It's the first real operating system that I've used where I haven't had to have a separate dedicated antivirus or firewall program because it's got it all pretty much baked in. 
generally most things just work. If you swap a motherboard, swap a graphics card, nine times out of 10, you can swap a hard drive and it'll boot up. Might take a couple of reboots and some drivers, but generally it'll reboot. We don't get that dreaded blue screen of death or uh, drive not found, all those kinds of things when you went from Intel drivers to AMD drivers or real tech drivers to whatever Intel, you don't get that anymore. So I think Windows 10 as a modern operating system is actually pretty good, pretty quick, pretty reliable. Um, yeah, I'd say Windows 2000 and Windows 10 are probably the best two. XP was, a, was good and worked on pretty much any hardware. So those would be my top three, definitely. Sam Rara says, I remember being about 14 when Windows XP shafted us for not having a genuine copy. Now that was around the time that the uh, blaster virus came out. And in order to not get the blaster virus, you had to update Windows to the latest version on Windows XP, which was, I think was Service Pack 3, possibly. Because we still had service packs back then. And that was the first one then that actually came with the Windows genuine activation or WGA software. So it actually phoned home to see if the, the software was legal or not, which was not really often done previously. So there was a, a massive thing where Microsoft knew that people needed to patch their systems, but then they also knew at the same time there was hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people with uh, hooky copies. So I, I, th I was working in the, in the trade then doing PC repairs and pretty much every day guaranteed there'd be somebody on the phone saying, uh, my window says it's not genuine anymore, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like, okay, where did you buy the PC? Oh, I bought it off eBay or I bought it off um, Gumtree or Trade It or whatever the local kind of free ads thing was because the internet was still in its infancy pretty much then. There wasn't Amazon really then. So people were buying PCs, people were installing dodgy Windows copies on there and suddenly they were all coming to that point where they were just deactivating. So it was bad for a lot of people because they thought they'd paid for a Windows copy, whereas really they hadn't. So yeah, that sucked. British Noob says he's selling a rusty flathead screwdriver, PM if interested. British Noob says Mac OS. You're just being stupid now. Although saying that, I was considering today buying an iPad. And not because I had a headache. I actually want, I'm seriously, well, you can see, I'm still wearing the watch. I'm still, I've gone back to the phone. Oh, Zamra, that's very kind of you, thank you. Just wanted to support the content. I think you just wanted the lights off again. <laughs> you just wanted the lights off again, yeah. Thank you very much, that's very kind of you. Matthew Day says, the death of the devil's own key. Yeah, that was, uh, that was when Microsoft really clamped down on all those kind of um, bulk codes or um, what, what was the word they used for them? Corporate keys, they were all getting kicked out. British Noob says, call me stupid, but if I gave you money, <laughs> You would agree to sell out. Yeah, true. Sky Stalker says, geez, you went back to your iPhone. Make your mind up. Well, that's the thing. It's, um, I've still got my Android phone. It's upstairs. It's, it's, uh, I haven't used it, actually, for probably the best part of a week now. And I am... There is something about the Apple ecosystem, which, although it's really locked down and tied in, there's certain things of it which do irk me something rotten... In British Noob, just stop it. <laughs> I do like the Apple operating system. The way that the watch works with the phone and then I sign into another device and everything gets transferred across. It is really nice, especially now in this modern age where we're having more and more devices. It is really nice to have everything just tied together. It's just a shame that there isn't a little bit more flexibility 
not being able to add memory sticks or memory cards to an iPhone, personally, I think is a massive mistake. And if they, well, if they charge less for the higher RAM versions, it would be fine. But there's such a massive premium on the RAM chips when we all know at the moment RAM is ridiculously cheap. So they are, um, yeah, that is, that is my concern. The other thing is the iPhone is really heavy. Now, I've held, <laughs> I've held the Android in my hand and the iPhone in my hand. I know they're different devices, etc., and one's got better glass, etc., whatever. But there's a lot of heft to an iPhone. Mine's light. Yours is heavy comparatively to the Android, even though yours is eight. Seven. Seven, sorry. Poor old Cash, you've got iPhone 7. Feel sorry Poor for us. Unboxing. Poor Mike's unboxing's Broke. wife's wife. Broke wife back mountain thing. <laughs> thing. Thing. Uh, Catamese Adventures says, Mike, you get your free subscription on Apple TV Plus. Yes, I actually subscribed to that today. And if, for those of you that haven't seen it already, links up here in the repeats will be how to end your subscription for Apple services, which actually if you don't want to be billed when it rolls around, do yourself a favor, make a note now, either on your phone with Siri or your Google Assistant or Alexa, whatever, make a note now in a year's time to end your subscription because otherwise they're gonna bill the hell out of you. Free is good, being billed is not so good. Uh, Katie Zora says, oh Mike, what RGB fans do you recommend? Now actually that's a very interesting question because um, actually first of all I'll say can you be a bit more precise? Are we talking RGB or addressable RGB? Because although they're the same they're technically very different and there's a different answer for each one. Matthew Day's got to join in. Bless you. Now for those of you that don't know who Matthew is, Matthew's got a YouTube channel also um, doing some unboxings and some product reviews. Do yourself a favor, or do me a favor, and do Matthew a favor as well. Click on his user profile, click on the three dots and visit channel. Throw him a like, throw him a sub, throw him under the bus, do what you want to do. And into noob. Captain Meets Adventures says it's only $4.99 to be fair. It is only $4.99, but then when you take into consideration your Netflix, Prime, Apple TV, Sky TV, all these sort of subscriptions, it all mounts up and it ends up to the point where you turn around at the end of the month and you're like, whoa, what happened to my wages? Where do you go? Oh, I'm subscribed to this, this, and this, this. And there's not enough hours in the day to watch it all. It really ain't. <laughs> British new back off, Matthew, we will find you. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> British Noobs is gonna dislike all his videos. Now, this is just friendly banter because Matthew and the Noob are all in our Discord and we're, we all know each other. Well, not intimately, obviously, but we know each other and we talk to each other. So for those of you that don't know us or are just new to this channel or whatever, then yeah, we are, despite our kind of, uh, our little jobs with each other, we are all good friends. Sky Stalker, just subscribe to Matt's channel. Thank you, Sky. That's what we're trying to do here. Like, there's too many people on YouTube who are kind of really guarded and kind of don't want to recommend or promote other people or help each other up the ladder. Everyone starts somewhere. And if I can help someone a little bit, fantastic. If someone wants to help me, fantastic. It's all good. It's a really, really cool thing. It's, um, it's, it's a platform and platforms need support. So support from you guys, support from other YouTubers, support from contributors, support from suppliers. That's what it's all about. That is why it's propping up this big platform when we're all working together and helping each other out. That's what it's all about. <laughs> wow. Matthew Day's uh, just gone all out and uh, stuck in the 20 pounds. That is very, very kind of you, Matthew. You don't have to do that at all. None of you have to do it. It's, uh, it is massively appreciated. And Kath's buttocks are getting a fantastic workout over there. She'll be down in the size six before we know it. Okay. 
again, she got me to say again, she has been a size six. Have 20, I can spend my Google Op Rewards credit on the phone app. Oh, that's pretty cool. Captain Meese Adventure says, I watch more YouTube than TV, always looking for new stuff. <laughs> Captain Meese Adventure says, Mike, it's because you make good content. Well, I don't know if it is. I, um, I just, I do my thing. If you guys enjoy it, fantastic. If you don't, then let me know what it is you don't like and I'll try and change it. It's, it's a really difficult thing. YouTube is such a, a wide and diverse platform. It's impossible to please everyone. It's like in politics, obviously, Brexit at the moment, all that stuff. The politicians are in a really awkward position. A, because they're full of shit. B, because they're trying to please everybody and it's never gonna happen. So yeah, you're never gonna please all the people all the time, but you can, uh, you can totally, yeah, you can please some people. Make the most of what you can do. Uh, sorry, British noob, you're funny. You make me laugh. Zamra says, love the UK tech community. Thank you. It is actually getting to be quite a community. There's uh, there's quite a few kind of flying up through the ranks. And actually, speaking of which, I think we should all... He's not in here tonight, but we'll say it anyway. Uh, Kevin from Click Tech UK has just hit his 5K milestone. I nearly said TV, yeah. He's just hit his 5K, so... Uh, what I make, keep up the good work, and 5K, 10K, 15K, it will all come. Just uh, keep at it. So, yeah. And for those of you that don't know Kev, he's in here quite often. Uh, I think he's out tonight or whatever. But anyway, if you have not visited his channel, go over there, give him a thumbs up, give him a sub like and all that kind of stuff. Because that's what it's all about. Uh, so going back to Katie's question, actually, I think I, I probably, well, on both sides, if you're looking for the best RGB fans, uh, the Inwin, I can't think of the right name now. Oh, I did the review on them, they were brilliant. What's that say? The in, what's the Inwin in, in fans I did? Is it's Polaris, Inwin Polaris. Now, Inwin Polaris is a fantastic idea and it's a fantastic concept. They are exceptionally expensive. I'm not gonna dilly-dally around it at all. They are expensive, Less, well, they're not expensive, but they're not budget by any means. But what they've got is this cool technology. So two connections, one to your P PWM header on your motherboard and one to your RGB header. Then the cable goes into the fan. Then on the other side of the fan, you can have a fly lead, which then can connect to another fan. And you can have a tiny little fly lead. So if you've got like a 240 mil radiator, you can put two really close together or three or four or however many. But also they do long leads as well, so you can put like two in the bottom, then have another fly lead going to the top, a couple of fans in the top, then another fly lead and one on the back. So at the moment in my Inwin 101C, I've got one, two, three, I've got six fans in there and they're all going off of one header. So it's just one wire going all the way through daisy chaining. Fantastic. And they all synchronize together and they look amazing. So for quality and sound and power, I would say the... Um, in wind Polaris. Sorry about that. <clears throat> um, addressable RGB is another matter altogether because I'm still struggling with those. The ones that you can see behind me in the case, those are the Sharkoon ones. There's um, three pin addressable RGB header plus four pin PWM. And they actually look really nice and they're very bright. You can probably, if I move my head a little bit, maybe you can see them. I don't know if you can make them out. I'm trying to see in CAF's monitor there. But for luminosity or brightness, there's not many which actually are much better than that. They are really, really good. They're quiet and they're easy to control from a hub. And I think they're relatively inexpensive. So you're looking about maybe £10 each per fan. So not a bad price at all. So yeah, depending on what you want. Depending on what your motherboard can do, um, or if you've got a case which has got a built-in controller, then you can do it that way. Whichever you choose, it's all good. So, yeah, hopefully that answers your question, Katie. I'm actually in a position now where 
I've got my Inwin 103. Just had to check. Yeah, Inwin 103, which I want to do a rebuild in, but Inwin haven't released their fans over here yet, the new um, Sirius Loop, or Cirrus Loop, which are really nice, but they don't have the pass-through connector, which is a bit odd. I was hoping they were going to keep that, but it seems they've kind of gone away from that for some reason. So I might have to rethink it, but we'll see. Oh, British noobs, go in. Don't go. Please stay. Uh, see if I've missed anything on here. No, I'm all good. Bless. Oh, I've already had some of those. Calf's just found the Mars bars that I've already raided. It was trick or treat here a couple of days ago, and... <clears throat> Last mover. So we bought these for the young kiddies, and well, no young oh, kiddies turned up. Banana. So today, accidentally, they fell off the cupboard, and somehow the impact on the floor, because we got tiles on the floor, and they're a little bit uneven, and somehow, I don't know how it happened, but they landed on a slightly funny angle, and they went like that, and it's like, oh no, they've fallen out. But Obviously, you can't just put them back in so because they might be damaged or whatever, and you don't want other people getting damaged chocolate. So I, um, I disposed of them, being kind and looking after my other family members. And Caps just found them. I told her I actually had a banana for dinner, but I didn't. I had uh, Mars bars. <laughs> I, did bars. I did have the banana as well, though, to be fair. Anyway, so that's uh, my confessional. <laughs> British Noob says, the UFC is calling me. I want to see some peeps get knocked out. Dude, you got some serious aggression. Just, just woosa. Rub your nose there, innit? Do your pressure points in your ears. Woosa. Martin Lawrence taught me that. Very clever guy. Ah, Click Tech UK. Typical, he comes in now after we've uh, congratulated him. So Click Tech UK, Kev. Just hit his 5k subs, as we said just now. So, yay! Captain Meets Adventures Liverpool are on match of the day. All right, all right. Well, I passed it to him, and then I passed it to him. That was terrible. <laughs> right, I'm going to pack some of this crap away, because this is just horrendous. I don't even know why I got... Why did I get all this out? Oh, yeah, to show you guys. So, out of the kit, what have you lot got? of this lot. Have I gone a bit overboard with all this stuff? Swiss Army knife? Is Should I have just used a Swiss Army knife? To be honest with you, for home stuff, you could probably get away with considerably less. Like, considerably less. <laughs> yeah. Calf says even in the 2000s I probably could as well. But I didn't, I, well, that is one thing that people can't say about me that I'm not prepared. Well, apart from when I'm doing live streams. Look, I even got a little junior hacksaw blade in there for dodgy things. What? I can't even remember why I had that in there. Why would I have had that? Oh, I know what that was for. Years ago, when you were taking out the uh, PCI Express blanking plates, cases used to be made of actual proper metal, like steel and SECC. So you couldn't just bend them a little bit and they would come out. So quite often, if you're putting a floppy drive in or another CD-ROM, to actually get the metal flap out, the blanking plate, sometimes you couldn't twist them out. So I literally had to cut some out. So that is why I used to have this. And in fact, I think I had another one of these which had um, PVC tape wrapped around it so I could use that as a makeshift handle because I didn't have the actual, the rest of it in there. <sighs> good times, good times. So, uh, moving on to other things, actually, what else is up? This week, we have had new graphics cards released, haven't we? The, uh, the 1660 Super. What are your thoughts on that? I, um, I am considering a graphics card upgrade of some sort, but I don't really know why. My 1070 still does what I need it to do, even on my 1440 screen. Um, what is the point in upgrading at the moment? Is there? 
Captain Meets Adventures, you got this out for good content. Well, I don't know if it was good content, but it was a, uh, it was therapy. I gotta be honest with you, I actually do miss doing the, uh, the on-site PC stuff and going around to people's houses and fixing their PCs and that. And I have actually said that if I get to the point where I like win the lottery or I've got spare time on my hands and I've got nothing better to do, what I wanted to do was to actually go around to kind of like uh, disabled people's houses or those that have kind of maybe like veterans or like old people who fought in the war and all that kind of stuff and just go around to their houses and help them set up their PCs or fix their PCs or even just give them a PC like if uh, if they just want to get online because they got family the other side of the world or something. It'd be kind of nice just to do that, wouldn't it? No pressure, not have to bill anybody anything. Do it all for free and just go around to someone's house and just help someone out, you know? Especially maybe like disabled people or people with like learning difficulties. Those are the people that probably make a lot of use out of PCs and stuff. So it'd be really nice to kind of go around and just help them out, you know? Help out a fellow human being. If you can't do that these days, then, well, what's the point? But yeah, I think that's what I, if I win the lottery, that's what I'll end up doing. I'll get myself a little van, and just totter around, go around to people's houses and fix their PCs for free. What could be nicer than that? I can't believe all that's gone back in there. Well, apart from the screwdrivers. I miss that old case, I really do. Oh, I've got a bit of room on the desk now. See what's going on. Uh, Katie is, oh yeah, Katie's got her RTX 2070 Super. How's that, how's that working out for you? Is it a, a good card? Uh, Glenn says, apparently Nvidia is rehashing the standard 2070 to compete with the FX, uh, sorry, the, um, the 5700 series, the RX. Matthew Day, tool I wish I had a spare of. My favorite Woolworths screwdriver with double, double-ended flat cross bits in one end, large flat cross on the other. Oh, that's good. Uh, Zamra says the 1660 Super is so pointless. It's just GDDR6. Katie Dizor says it is a good card, but sounds like a road sweeper when it gets warm. I think most cards do actually, to some extent. There's very few cards that actually stay quiet while they're um, while they're under a massive load. Zamra says I'm still running the RX 480 and the FX 8350. Oh, 8350, that was a great card. And the 40 RX 4800. Uh, RX like that? One of those? That's going in another build. Hopefully. Right then, um, what do you reckon? Should we have a quick look at this motherboard? What do you think? You lot bored of this yet, or do you want to have a look at a motherboard? Come on, let's have a look at a motherboard. Or actually, which would you rather see? Let's have a bit of a vote. So, motherboard? Cat. Cat. Cath. No. <laughs> I'm not gonna do the Ryzen because that's just boring shit. So, power supply, docking station, motherboard. I'm pretty sure I know what the outcome's gonna be, but I will, uh, I will let you uh, decide. It's quite still going, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, whip it out. Woo hoo. Okay. <laughs> Glenn says PSU, let's have a look at that. Now that surprises me. Sky's saying the motherboard. I'm saying the Mars bars. Calf's eating the Mars bars. She's got to get some calories inside her now after all that workout, turning the lights on and off. Matthew Day says PSU, good for the price. Paul's saying the motherboard. Richard's thinking PSU. So PSU is... Um, Captain Meat saying, thoughts on TJ? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Oh, he's retracted his message. <laughs> right. Let's have a look at the power supply, because this one's actually a little bit interesting. This is £30 in the UK at the moment. 
Now there was a another option which was from um, God, C McKnight, another regular on a Discord who recommended a, I think it was another, it was a 600 watt and it was a semi-modular. But unfortunately um, they didn't have one in stock and it was a good couple of weeks wait. So I wanted to get this build done and dusted. So I went for this one again. It's going into a Game Max case, the Game Max. No, it's not even a Game Max, is it? It's bloody Sahara. I just thought that. Damn it. Can you see the utter look of disappointment on my face? I'm not upset, I'm disappointed. Those are the words you don't want to hear. I'm disappointed in myself. Uh, Captain Meets Adventure says, uh, yeah. Uh, Mike, thoughts on the new Nvidia Shield TV and Pro? I gotta be honest with you, the Nvidia Shield, I have never shown any interest in whatsoever. I, be completely honest with you, I don't actually know what it is. That is my, uh, my complete honest truth, I do not know. Zamra says, I've got that docking station on your suggestion. Oh, that's cool, thank you. I'm glad of that. Sky Stalker says, I believe that a very similar docking station sent to me by a certain YouTube content provider. I don't know who you mean. Well, actually, this is a slightly different one than what we had on last time. Although, I'm relatively confident that the internals are gonna be pretty much the same. It, it does actually look similar packaging. But anyway, we'll take a look at that. So have a look at this power supply. Now this power supply, if, uh, if you have any allergies to ketchup or mustard, or both, or low wattage, or cheap production values, don't watch the BBC and don't watch this. So this is the packaging, as you'll see again in the video when I do the full video and the tests and noise and all that kind of stuff. So actually the packaging, not bad. Pretty impressive. Can you guys and girls see that? Hopefully you can. Yeah. Oh yeah, see it on there. This one's about 10 minutes behind. I still had hair in that video. It's really hot in here. Right, so we've got a bit of cardboard with Game Max on. Now that's actually, little things like that make a difference to me because it's the unboxing process. It actually looks pretty cool. Now Game Max actually, even though they have been a sponsor before, um, yeah, they are nothing to do with this video whatsoever. I've gone and bought this at my own, I would say hard earned, but this is out of a noob's hard earned money. Uh, Glenn's saying, how many amps on the 12 volt rail? That's a good question actually, let's have a look. Uh, going back to Captain Meat's Android, it's an Android TV box. I can't, yeah, TV boxes, that's the one thing. I, I did a few videos for the Tanex TX Pro, which I probably still got here somewhere, but I don't get any time really to watch TV. And if I do, it's normally on the TV in the front room, which is either the Fire Stick, which again is probably the same sort of deal, um, or it's my little tiny mini PC, which because sometimes I'm in there and I want to do some web page browsing or actually play a game or something, I do find a PC to be a lot more flexible as a media center than any of these kind of TV boxes or as good as they are and they are, they do their jobs fantastically well, but I just prefer a PC for that particular, that particular kind of thing. Anyway, so actually that's quite nice, isn't it? Nice packaging, it's all securely wrapped. I actually feel bad opening this now. But you can see there, we've got our ketchup and mustard. Nice Velcro strap on there. Table on the Hmm? What's Matthew What's Matthew Day? Table on the box. Oh, oh what, the, uh, the specs for the, the thing? Wonder if it does say on there. Ah, oh, there we go. Right on the twelve volt rail, we have got how many amps? Da, 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 da. Which one is this? This is the GP GP five hundred. So GP five hundred on the twelve volt rail is thirty four amps, which isn't great, but it's not bad. 
Got 15 amps on the uh, 3.3 and 15 amps on the 5. 34 amps on the 12. So 500 watts output. And it's active PFC controlled as well, which is actually quite nice to see. Because sometimes you just get PFC or no PFC at all. So to have that is actually quite good. Um, yeah, that's not too bad, is it? 34 amps. Uh, da -da. Oh, Captain Me's Adventure's got to go. See you next week, mate. Be lucky. Uh, Tristan Arthur says, Hey, Mike, I've just bought a fake 256 gig USB stick. How do I revert it to its actual value? I've just put it in the bin. Throw it in the sea. That's the best thing to do with these things. Any waste plastic you don't want, throw it in the sea. Because Greta hates that shit. She really does. That really gets her knickers in a twist. And that's what we like to see. In the sea. Yeah, so I don't think, sometimes they have had some luck in doing it, but probably what is easier to do, rather than reflashing it on those drives, if you repartition it, and just repartition it to what it should be. So if it's an eight gig stick, if you take it apart, you'll see on the chip what it is. So then you could, if it's an eight gig, just repartition it to 7.3 gigabytes, and that should be more than enough. You get the idea. Anyway, let's have a look at this power supply. So connection wise, and this is actually what I'm slightly interested in, I'm partially concerned. Now again, braided cables, if you're gonna braid the cables, like, Braid them right to the end. But there's enough flex on that. So that could probably go a little bit further. Let's see if we can squeeze it up in there or wherever it's been. I think the heat shrink's been done really well on there. That ain't moving. So again, that's not gonna be terrible because it's gonna be in the top corner of the motherboard. So yeah, not the end of the world, but it's got a four pin, so that's cool. 24 pin on the old uh, main power. Got a couple of SATAs. How many SATAs have we got, actually? I'd imagine this is going to be six. So, uh, oh, two Molex, two SATA on that rail, a, another two SATA and a Molex. That is old school. Richard asks if his maths is correct, that 408 amps on the 12 volt rail. Sorry, I'll, I'll have to read that. Um, and slightly disappointing, I suppose, but not unusual. Do, 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 do. Sorry, that's um, Tom James, if anyone's wondering. The, uh, actually, that's all right. The connector for the four pin or six pin PCIe, it's got a really nice slot on action there. That's nice, I like that. It's only one cable, so you've only got one six pin or one eight pin, but again, for a 500 watt power supply, it's not got delusions of grandeur. It's not put on two eight pins or two six pins. It's been sensible about it and just given you a single eight pin, which realistically is pretty much where you'd end up with a build of this sort of nature. If you're spending 30 pounds on a 500 watt power supply, even if it is 80 plus bronze, it's obviously not the most high powered power supply. So for them to actually be upfront about it and just put one, PCI Express connector on, it's actually pretty brave because a lot of people would look at this and say, well, actually I need two connectors, so I'm ruling it out, which is exactly what you should do because if your graphics card is taking that much grunt, then this isn't the power supply for you. So actually, yeah, hats off to them for that. And having said that, I don't like it when it's got the spurs that hang off of it. So you've got the doubled up connector, which of course you could do like the adapters I showed earlier in the video. You could put one of those on if you want to and split that into two lots of four or two lots of six or whatever it may be. But actually for cable management, that's actually gonna look really nice. And Why I, is the cable so and, I, though? and I've just thought actually, the build that I was doing actually needs two six pins. <laughs> oh there. Right, we'll have to rethink that as well then. This has turned out to be one of those days or maybe actually, yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. All right, let's have a look at the power supply in a bit more detail. I didn't want to open this, but I will. 
Okay, so in, inside there, we've got a nice big white fan, and let's do the peely. Well, it was half off anyway. That looks like that's just stuck on over the top. I oh, know it's removable, that's okay. So 140 mil fan, which is nice to see. Most of these you generally end up with a 120, so 140 obviously can spin slower. I would imagine there's gonna be a rifle bearing in there rather than a, a, a ball bearing or a fluid bearing. But again, 30 quid, you're not really gonna expect much more than that. Um, I'd be interested to see who the OEM of this is. I would imagine it's probably gonna be um, oh, the same one that makes the PCs for Walmart. Um, Great Wall, XPG, yeah. That's right. Sorry, calf's on another tangent. But yeah, I think, I'd imagine this is gonna be Great Wall power supply. I'd be surprised if it isn't. Uh, again, I will crack it open actually and have a look or do some investigation and see what we can work out from the PCB. Looking inside, not really a great deal of identification on there. There's some pretty decent heat sinks in there spread out over quite an area. And again, 140 mil fan, so can't really go too far wrong. It, it looks all right, it's got this nice matte finish on it. So yeah, good quality clicky button, happy days. And it's a, a full range, so it's got a full range sticker on there. So this is suitable for use uh, pretty much worldwide. So 110 uh, volts over in the US, 230, 240 over here, no problems at all. So if you're building a PC and maybe you're going, you're gonna take it abroad or whatever, then it's got the circuitry in there to handle that. I did notice today actually the even the more expensive power supply in CAF's computer, which is the uh, Be Quiet System Builder 8, that one has actually only got 230 to 240 volt uh, spectrum on it. So that's uh, in some ways is a good thing because the way the 80 plus rating works is it's easier to get a higher 80 plus rating with the 110 system than what it is on the 230 system because of the way it works. So you can be more efficient in the US but less so in the UK, but still get the same 80 plus rating. So if you do a model which works in both areas, then it's a little bit easier to get your ratifications. Although I think it does take into account the voltage spread as well. I could be wrong on that. Anyway, moving on. Which case are we putting it in? Was this for Glenn or was yeah, this for that eight? That one there, the Sahara. Uh, Kaf, Kaf said it wrong, Zam, Zamra, sorry. The build is going to be going into, um, I thought I was putting in a Game Max case, but it's not, it's going into a Sahara case. So I was trying to match up the brands, but that's obviously not going to happen now, eh? because I failed to, uh, to notice that they're completely different brands. But hey-ho, life goes on. It'll still be a nice build. And actually, the PC, from what I can, I can work out in my head, the PC is gonna cost about, well, it's gonna be, I'll be selling it for about 300 pounds, which for a, a pretty decent PC with a Ryzen 5, 1400, 16 gigs of RAM, half decent GPU, nice case with Windows license and Office on there installed, genuine licenses. Uh, 300 quid is actually, I think it's actually a, a really good price. And hopefully should last uh, for quite a while. I'm never gonna get that back in there, am I? We'll try. So there's the power supply, what do you reckon? Would you, um, would you use one of these in your own rig? A lower powered rig, obviously, because it's only a, well, it says 500 watts on there, but I would say it's probably closer to 500, uh, 400, if you're comparing it with higher end systems. But again, a couple of cable ties and some uh, nuts and bolts now. Packaging wise and presentation wise, um, I don't think there's much you can complain about on that. Oh, there's a user manual, should have had a look at that earlier. That tells you everything I've just taken ages to witter on about. So 80 plus, I'm trying to see what the 80 plus is for over the different ranges. No, it doesn't show you. Never mind. Game Max is a strange company as well because they um, they're Game Max in the UK or Game Max UK, but they're kind of like a sub company. 
So they're not actually Game Max, the kind of Taiwanese brand or Japanese or Chinese or wherever it is, I'm not sure. You get the idea. It's not, um, it's not who, the, they're not the same company essentially. They're imported by a subsidiary, which happens to have the same name. Probably a big tax fiddle, you know, these companies were big corporations or it's actually easier to manage the companies. Anyway, so there you go, Game Max Power, 500 watt ATX power supply. Right, uh, let's have a quick look at this motherboard and then I'll, we'll, we'll call it a night because thing is getting, times are getting on. So this is the ASRock B450M HDV version 4.0. Now, obviously it comes with a driver DVD, which is no use to anybody. Only one M.2 screw, because we've only got one M.2 slot, because again, it's micro ATX. Couple of SATA cables. Backplate. Bit of cardboard. Always nice to see a bit of cardboard. And this is just simple. There's nothing else in there, that is it. Really simple, really cheap, really functional board. Uh, from what I can remember, five star reviews on Amazon. And again, because MSI, or sorry, ASRock, don't actually pay people to do reviews. You can know that those reviews are genuine. So take that as you will. Oh. I love the smell of fresh PCB in the morning, even though it's the evening, but for some of you, it might be the morning. Sorry, just looking at the comments there. So there we go. That is the B450M HDV. So again, super simple, which actually in a lot of cases, no pun intended, works really well because there's less to go wrong. And it's actually quite a nice looking board. So if you're using this in a windowed case, then yeah, there's a lot to like on this. Nice and easy access to everything. It's not all cluttered. Um, there's no heat sink on the VRM here. Or the, the chokes rather, so as uh, Glenn's just mentioned, and there's none on this top section here, but I have already considered this and in a little box, which I've hidden behind here somewhere. Sorry? What's that? Yeah, it's fine. So what we've got here, what we've got here is failure to communicate. These are Glenn and Guns N' Roses rolled in. Yeah, I know. Thermally conductive adhesive and heat sinks. So what we're going to do, because this PC is going to be going a reasonable distance away and I don't want the added hassle of support and all that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick on a heat sink on there, over those chokes there. And hopefully, if I can, I'm going to try and stick one in there, which I don't think is quite going to go. So I might have to uh, cut a little bit of that out. Even, to be honest with you, that is massively overkill for that section. So I could trim that down. <clears throat> Excuse me. I could trim that down. Oh, I better have a drink. <clears throat> I have frogs in my throat. That's PCB. Yeah. <clears throat> Snorting PCB will give you a bad throat. Yeah, so I'm going to stick some of those on there. Probably cut them down a little bit and stick those on there just to give the chokes a little bit more uh, airflow. But saying that, we're gonna be using the standard stock AMD cooler. So in its standard configuration, with it clipped on there, you're gonna get a really nice down draft through the fins. So those areas are gonna be kept nice and cool anyway. And in fact, I would argue using the stock configuration with the Ryzen 5 1400, even with a mild overclock, those VRMs are going to be more than adequate. Uh, some people have done tests on these already and have managed to get some pretty, pretty significant overclocks, even with its limited power delivery, which <clears throat> is expected. You've only got a four pin ATX connector in the top here. So obviously it's not designed for taking loads of power. It is what it is. It's a budget board, fully functional, does what it's meant to do. And in fact, there's a lot of OEMs that use this in their in their builds, and they pair these up with uh, Ryzen 7s, Ryzen 9s to some extent, um, Ryzen 5s all day long. 
this sort of board is just going to be rock solid as long as you're not pushing it to extreme lengths, which realistically, why would you want to? Especially at this price point. Only two RAM slots, which again is a little bit of a downside. So if you're looking for dual channel straight out of the box, either two eight, two fours to make eight or two eights to make 16, prices as they are at the moment, it would be madness not to go for 16 on this, to be completely honest. Uh, you'd be wasting your money putting two fours in there. But the um, the IO bridge has got a nice little heat sink on it, so that's nice. Single PCI Express 16 slot, a PCI Express times one slot, which I think will do it to times four. M.2, Ultra M.2, so NVMe drives or SATA SSDs. No problems at all. One thing I don't like about ASRock boards is they always have the um, USB header on this side. I would so much prefer to see it on the bottom, but Again, that's a, a minor gripe at sort of 50 pounds, which is what this board costs. Did I mention that already? This board's 50 pounds. Seriously, people, 50 pounds for this motherboard. What do you expect? Zamra's asking why, but you should explain it is a budget of 300. Um, what, sorry, what was that? Zamra's saying why the power supply on the motherboard. Oh, right, yeah. The That's the reason why this is all budget stuff. Basically, an old friend of ours from our BBC days wants a new PC, doesn't want to spend a load of money, not going to be using it for a great deal, internet, email, word processing, tiny little bit of video editing. Um, they've actually gone from a Core 2 Duo system, which I built probably about four or five years ago, so comparatively this thing's going to be night and day. Um, from what I can remember, I think the graphics card I put in that machine actually for the task of video editing with the very basic video editing system was something like a, um, an NVIDIA GT200 series or something, like the fanless version. So what we're talking here is going from a very low end system like an E4400 Core 2 Duo, which I think was 2 gigahertz, overclocked to 3 gigahertz, to a 4 core, 8 thread system with 16 gigs of RAM. Yeah, it's gonna be completely night and day and also in a nicer case and all that kind of stuff as well. Because obviously things have changed in the last five years quite dramatically. The uh, the whole landscape has really. Who'd have thought five years ago that you'd be buying AMD systems again? Back then it was the FX stuff, which people didn't take to very well. The budget minded did, but the, uh, the higher echelon or the people with lots of money to burn were always Intel. Um, downsides of this board, so a couple of downsides which I can see already, obviously the power delivery isn't fantastic. There's uh, a very small amount of fan headers in here, so we've got a CPU fan header, and on this side we've got a chassis fan header on this back side, which you'd expect to see. But there's only one additional fan header here at the bottom, and it's only a three pin header rather than a four pin PWM, which again, it's a budget board, so you're not expecting much. So perfectly functional. It's um, you've, at least you've got three headers rather than just two, so it's not going to be that bad. And actually, the case that it's going into the um, like I said, the Sahara P10 Sync, the P10 Sync has actually got its own fan hub built into it with a remote control, so it only needs one header anyway. So we'll plug it into that rear chassis fan header, and it's going to be absolutely fine. Again. It's not going to need a massive amount of cooling. Most of the cooling is going to be taken care of by the actual processor, the uh, the stock cooling fan. So yeah, actually I quite like the look of it. It's kind of it's quite neat. And the more I look at these boards, the cheaper boards. Do you think this is a B450 chipset? So you kind of get a little bit of an overclock. You will get a little bit of precision boost as well for supported CPUs. But if you really wanted to get the most out of a processor you'd be spending 200 pounds, give or take, which is four times the price. And for what? Maybe 500 megahertz faster overclock, which isn't a lot. So 200 pounds to get that amount of pro uh, performance. Yeah, graphics cards and all that kind of stuff and extra flexibility with extra headers and all that kind of stuff. I get it. People want to do it, they want to have nice systems, but this is functional, this will work with the components we're putting on it. It is going to perform a solid, stable platform for a PC, and it's 50 quid. 
it still blows my mind that you can get all this technology onto one board for 50 quid. Really does. Anyway, that's enough of that. So what do you think? Honest opinions. I think it's actually good. I think it's great value for money. It's the cheapest B450 board I could find on Amazon. And again, uh, we'll probably put links in the description underneath because we are absolute sellouts and we love for you to use our affiliate links and all that kind of stuff. But I cannot think of one justifiable reason why I shouldn't use this board. I was trying to think of reasons why I should and I was thinking, well, actually there's no real reason why I should use this board. Why don't I look at it the other way around? Why shouldn't I use it? Which makes more sense. And I can't. I cannot see a logical reason why I can't use this board or why I shouldn't use this board. Uh, Sky Stalker says, I'll go through reason these in a minute, but I'll go through what I can see here at the moment. Uh, Sky Stalker says, Mike, what is the difference between three pin and four pin fan headers? Well, traditionally, uh, fan headers used to always be three pins. So you had uh, one which measured RPM, one which provided voltage, and the other one was a ground. So depending on how much voltage you gave to a fan, that would give you a higher rotational speed, which would then be sent back through the, the connector. So pretty much like a, a desk fan, give it more voltage by pressing more buttons and you get a faster speed. So PWM or pulse, pulse width modulation added a fourth pin. So with that, then you get further control. So rather than going up in steps of voltage, you could go up and control it infinitely from its lowest rated RPM to its highest rated RPM. So that is why on a lot of fans, you can set a curve and you can have multiple points on a graph. Whereas with a lot of DC based fans or three pin fans, there was only certain amounts of voltages which would actually make a difference in the fan speed. So they'd step up and you'd have noticeable jumps, whereas PWM kind of smooths out that um, modulation between the different voltages. There's probably someone who can explain that a lot better than I can, but that is the kind of the basic version of it. Essentially, four pins is better than three pins, more control, um, more feedback to the motherboard, more more reliable RPMs as well, I think. So I think the RPMs on the the three pin is kind of almost like a guesstimate based on the voltage. But again, I could be completely wrong on that. But anyway, I think it's a nice board. I like it. And the fact is Ryzen 3000 ready out of the box, takes the Athlon 200G series straight out of the box, Raven Ridge 2. So again, if you're building a budget system with Athlon 200GE, and you don't want all the faffing around of flashing a BIOS or spending a ton of money, like £100 plus, for one of the Max boards, which have got the uh, USB flashback and all that kind of stuff. This is perfect, absolutely perfect. Budget builds, even mid-range builds, and like I said, OEMs are gonna stick these in big, high-end systems because it's gonna be a cheaper way for them to do it. Uh, da -da. Okay. Uh, Tristan says he's on the sick. Oh, sorry to hear that. <coughs> it happens to a lot of us. Um, I've spent numerous periods on the sick due to um, mental illness, health issues, bad back, all sorts of things. And unfortunately, I think it's part of modern day life that a lot of us go through it at some point or other. But like most things in life, there's ups and downs, peaks and troughs, and uh, yeah, as long as you can ride through the troughs, you'll hopefully make it through to the peaks. What can I say? Sky Stalker says it looks like a great board for the money. I would love to see a review on it. Uh, you just did. <laughs> I, I, I would do a better one. You'll know it'll be better because it'll have B-roll. Other than that, it'll probably be the same review. But I will do some more testing. I'll do some more looking into it as well. And I will be doing the building it as well, so you'll see how it all works. Uh, Zamra says, what SSD are you going to use for the budget? Now, that is actually a very good question. In the, um, the PC Park Picker listing, which um, I'll try and put in the video description after we finish this. It's in last week's, isn't it? I think it might be in last week's already. 
I'm not sure, but I'll, I'll find the list in. So if you come back, uh, see my PC part picker listings, Mike's unboxing, if you search for that, it's under Glenn's build. And I think I went for a A-Data SU600, which is a 240 or 256 gig SSD, just a, a SATA SSD. I was thinking it would be nice to do NVMe or M.2 in here just to get rid of some wiring, but realistically for the extra money, Probably not entirely necessary. I think the drive was about 24, 25 pounds. And also with that, I'm gonna put some mass storage, which will probably be a, I think again, that was in a Hitachi one terabyte desk star or death star or whatever their drives are called now. So I think that's a, a pretty flexible system. So plenty of storage. So if he wants to keep uh, Glenn used to do a lot of work as a entertainer back in the days on like holiday camps and stuff. Uh, he was a compare and all those kinds of things, like a blue coat, red coat, yellow coat, whatever they are. So he's got a lot of old footage, a lot of old pictures, uh, memorabilia, that kind of stuff, which he likes to keep. So it's a common thing as we get older in life, you like to reminisce about things from younger days. So you keep it all on your hard drive. So nice big hard drive to keep all those files on because a lot of the stuff is from older footage, so lesser file sizes, so one terabyte should be more than adequate. I think in his previous computer, I think I put in a 500 gig drive, which I'm not too sure if he's filled that up yet or not. Uh, if he has, then I'll transfer that or put that drive into the new machine, whatever, whatever we need to do. Uh, Matthew Day says, did I make a bad choice building Haswell? Um, no, probably not. As well as a, still a pretty decent platform. It is, is getting on a bit, it's aging a bit, but still perfectly functional. Skystalker says, Exp excellent explanation, Mike, thanks. Oh, that's okay. It, it probably was wrong. <laughs> you might want to go to Wikipedia. I think it's, I was, it was along those lines. It's been a while since I've looked into it. Uh, Tristan Arthur says, nice thought. I'm not sure what that was for, but maybe that was the peaks and troughs. Baby U says, I have ASRock B450 Pro 4 ATX. Pretty solid board with my Ryzen and OC. Baby U, funny enough, today um, I was doing CAF's build in the uh, ADATA XPG Invader case, and the motherboard in there is that same one, which I reviewed, the ASRock B450 Pro 4, which actually I found yet again to be a very satisfactory and actually a really nice board. I really do have a thing for ASRock boards. I don't know, some boards you just get an affinity with and if, as long as they're reliable as well. Like MSI has their ups and downs where they, they did really good uh, previous series. The latest stuff is not so great. Um, Gigabyte have similar issues where they have kind of ups and downs. But ASRock in general, since their early days when they were still part of ASUS, um, some of their old G, was it the the KG 741G, which was their SIS based chipset motherboard for the um, Athlon boards and stuff back in the day. That was horrendous. I think that was a socket S370. So as Intel, AMD or Cyrix, I think S370 worked on. Possibly, but yeah, that was a particularly bad board. Very, very high return rates. But as ASRock have come through, I would say they're actually one of the top tier players now. <laughs> Tristan says, "Yep, yeah, it was the peaks and the troughs." Yeah, mate. Seriously, um, if you're on a sick, if any or any of you actually, this this goes to everybody. Boys, girls, men, women, whatever. If you've ever had anything like mental illness or back problems or physical disabilities or whatever, times get you down and people do get down. It's part of life. I think it's part of growing and evolving as human beings. But if you don't experience the lows, you don't appreciate the highs. So always bear that in mind. Like, yeah, you might be in a really dark place, but and analyze where you are in that dark place and think about what's going on. And then when you do get to the other side of it and you're in a happier place, you can look back and say, wow, that was really bad. And you can remember what it's like, but then you can appreciate what it's like when you're not in that place. 
It probably sounds like hippie, st hippie stuff, but it actually does work. And the more you be mindful of your state of mind, it makes it easier to work out what's going wrong and what you're doing, which is making you feel bad, and to make yourself feel better. Sorry, this is turning into Mike's self-help group, so I do apologize. But basically what I'm saying is, things get bad, but they get better, eventually. Not always quickly, but eventually they do. Good days and bad days. Uh, Sky Stalker said, actually, a letter saying, next month I'm buying an MSI Meg X570 Unify. I love it, it's all black and it has three M.2 slots. Yeah, we were talking about that in the Discord earlier. That is actually probably the best board that MSI do. And they've essentially had to do that to rectify the problems with, the pr well, not problems, but the shortcomings of their other boards in the range. But the Unify seems to have uh, done really well. Uh, Sky Stalker says, ASRock is no longer a subset of ASUS. No, um, I'm not sure exactly when it was. It was a while back, but ASRock actually became their own individual company. So uh, originally, ASRock and ASUS shared resources, um, both manufacturing and uh, R&D. Essentially, it was the same company working out of two different areas. Um, they had ASUS, which was the kind of the main brand, ASRock, which was the kind of the budget orientated market. Um, but yeah, I think it was a probably, I'm thinking it was like 2007. It was quite a long time ago, but they did kind of part ways. So now they no longer share workforce, um, manufacturing units, all that. They are com two completely separate entities. Uh, Glenn says he's sorry, he's away AFK for five minutes. Yeah, I, I, you have to catch up. I don't know, I don't know what happened either. A letter's showing off, there are two TBs. Just put two GBs there, but that's a typo. Dyslexia for you. Uh, baby you, by the way, what cooler for CPU do you recommend? It must be just quiet and not expensive, like 30 bucks or $30. Um, depending where you are, I would say Cooler Master Evo 212, always a good shout. Uh, the Arctic Cooling, the Freezer 34, or maybe the threes of 33, if you can get one on a reduction or a rebate, they're a very good shout. Other than that, really, the Gamax 400, that's always quite good. That one's generally a little bit cheaper, depending where you are. Uh, quite often see offers on that one. I've seen that one as low as like $15, but again, depends where you are and what offers are on. But to be honest with you, most of the 120 mil fan tower coolers, they are all within kind of spitting distance of each other, as in cooling performance. So. I wouldn't say there's actually a bad one to go for. Based on where you are, sales, offers, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, color characteristics, if you want one with LEDs or you don't want one with LEDs or whatever, then take that into consideration. But I don't think you can make a bad choice on a 120mm tower these days. Uh, hoodie Shopper says, Jeff. My name's Jeff. <laughs> oh yeah, Matthew Day's uh, Tech Yes is Snowman, the Snowman cooler. That's actually looks like quite good. If, if you don't mind waiting for it to come from Gearbest or uh, wherever it is. Uh, Glenn says, get the best sub $30 cooler that has the most heat pipes. I did see one tonight advertised somewhere that had five heat pipes, which is more than the usual three or four. Four is the norm, five is unusual. I can't remember what it was. Anyway, I think that pretty much wraps things up. I think I've bored you all to tears and uh, I didn't realize what time it was. It's actually getting on really late. So thanks everyone who's joined us tonight. It's, uh, it's been slightly different and we've looked at my crappy old tools and my old Windows discs and Hopefully some of you may have picked up a couple of license keys for retro builds or, actually that's the point. Yeah, if you're using um, 
some kind of virtualization. If you want to use any of those Windows keys, then feel free. I don't think Microsoft will actually verify them anymore or check them, so if it helps you, then feel free. Uh, speaking of which, if you want any of those license keys, feel free to drop me a PM or join us on Discord, and uh, I will happily furnish you with Windows keys for Windows 98 and Windows Millennium and all that kind of stuff, because uh, it's no use to me. Um, if you want any CD keys for newer operating systems or Office, again, as always, uh, premium CD keys, for me, absolutely spot on. Can't fault the price, uh, three pounds, or th well, I think it works out about two pounds 80, because it's based on the exchange rate for euros, but for a Windows 10 retail license key, for like less than three pounds seems bizarre. How they can do it, I do not know. Um, if you need Office, Office 2019, again, eight pounds for Office, for a lifetime license, or until they decide to uh, kill off Windows 2019, you can't go wrong. It's much better than a uh, 365 subscription, that's for sure. Unless you need the extra storage, that is, in which case, that's a different kettle of fish. But check out premium CD keys if you want discount code. Discount code is Mike's Unboxing. Um, yeah, that pretty much wraps things up. If you want to see more detailed videos about all the stuff we've mentioned here tonight, and also CAF's build in the ADATA XPG Invader, also, my upgrade when I'm doing the upgrade on the Ryzen 5 3600. For those of you that are doing video editing or content creation, more so than gaming, I'm going to be comparing this directly with the Ryzen 7 7700X, which is what is replacing it with. Um, which, kind of on paper, pound for pound, they should be within spitting distance, but I think this is going to outperform it by quite a margin. So, keep tuned in to see how that goes. But, uh, thanks to everyone tonight who has contributed, commented, and throwing me super chats. We do appreciate it, and Kath is waving over there. I'll wave for her as well. Oh, the cat's woken up as well. Yeah, so there we go. So thanks everyone. Um, yeah, Sky Stalker saying there, he's got the uh, key as well, and found it to be really good, so it's not just me. Uh, thank you all for bearing with us for these for the last oh, nearly three hours. What the hell is wrong with me? Uh, uh, Tristan says, unspam me. Oh, I'll look in my spam box. I don't look in my spam messages, so I'll, I'll look into that. Anyway, evening from me, good evening from a calf. Uh, see you all again next Saturday evening, same back time, same back channel. Oh my God, I've just become Linus Tech Tips. I do apologize. <laughs> Thanks everybody, see you later. Now I can just work out how to stop the stream. Oh, where's the button? There we go. Good night, everybody. Oh, yeah, I do want to end it.